What's up, everybody? This is Forehead Fables, episode six, featuring a guest that I have had lined up since this podcast was just a, a, a twinkle in my eye. All right. And uh, I had him lined up in DMs, but I didn't know when I was going to do it. So then I went to Patreon and I, I pulled the patrons. I said, guys, who do you want on the podcast? And, uh, and of course, I put down the list. I said, uh, Charboard, Wilbur Soot, uh, Lieutenant Corbus, and somebody else. I forget who. And, and I went ahead and booked Wilbur Soot because he has a million subs. I figured he'd be the one. Everybody loves him. And, uh, and then I had him on the podcast. But uh, it turns out you guys actually didn't want Wilbur Soot. <laughs> you guys wanted today's guest, Charborg. My main man, Charborg. He uh, makes fantastic videos, puts a lot of time and effort into them, uploads them every uh, fucking six months. <laughs> he really should upload more. But <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys appreciate this episode. It's a long boy. It's a long boy, man. Two hours and 12 minutes or something like that. I don't know how long. Well, I haven't edited yet, so it might be shorter than that. But it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, so... And I just started recording. I didn't introduce him or anything. So uh, you're just going to segue right into the middle of a conversation. Do you ever do like Uber Eats or anything like that? No, nah, I've never done that before. Uh, I feel like that, that would that would kill me if I did that because yeah, that would start a dangerous me. trend. It Well, they tack on so many fees and stuff. Like there's like the, the delivery fee, the convenience fee. And if you're not a scumbag, you got to tip the driver. And, uh, which that's a huge point of contention between me and my brother, because, um, I don't know what your belief on tipping is, <laughs> dude. I feel I don't, I'd have to, I'd, I'd get into it. Get, tell me what you were going to tell me and then I'll All talk right. about that. because I don't like when I'm at a restaurant, the, my, cause I'm, I'm kind of a scumbag, right? <laughs> but I oh, feel really? like, Whoa. yeah, I feel like it, like it's just for laughs. Like, when it comes to actually dealing with people, you know, I don't like it when people are serving me. And my biggest, like, gauge on whether or not someone's nice is how they treat wait staff. Now, I've never been a waiter before, and I've never, that's like, they're, everybody says that, they're like, oh, you'll treat them better if you were a waiter or a waitress. Like, if you've had that job, you understand. I don't even have to be a waiter or a waitress to look at it and go, that job kind of fucking sucks. They should probably, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And they're bringing food to me and filling my drink like I'm You're like I'm just God. Sitting there, yeah, like a fucking fat ass, like a they're lord, delivering, literally putting food in front yeah. of you, can, and, filling your glass. Yeah. And so I I tip the fuck out of them, and yeah, and like there's that huge thing, especially like our generation. They're like, uh, you know, so what if I can't afford it? Well, then don't fucking eat out. Stay at home and eat yeah. rice and fucking hot dogs. You poor piece of shit. Like, and see what what. I, I always tip, but what I don't like is when you're expected to tip when they just do a shitty job. Like I'm a nice person and yeah. I'm not I'm not rude to people, but if you're just the shittiest fucking like host that I've ever seen, I'm not gonna tip well, you know what I mean? And it's like I don't know, I I feel bad, but at the same time I'm like, dude, I, I've been sitting here for like an hour and a half and you haven't even like come to check on me or something and it, it goes back to like well i'm not like a king or something but i mean i'm thirsty dude come on well i you know what i do is i i tip the same amount every time and and i and then just, if they do extra well then you'll no, go higher i, I don't even i don't even tip higher I just tip the same amount because i think you know like what so if they're, it's like, what oh if they're just having a shitty day yeah, you know what well, i mean hey. Like what I they're bring just my having a game to everything or not only that, but like uh, half the time when people are pissed off about their service, it's because they cook their food wrong or something like that. I'm like, do you think your waiter's cooking? No, yeah, he's, he's just bringing shit from the kitchen to you. He doesn't. <laughs> dude, I used to work in a deli and people would be like, um, this, this ham, you changed the recipe on this ham. And I'm like, bitch, what? <laughs> like, I just opened this package and cut it up for you. I didn't yeah. do shit. And they'll, they'll be on my case about this. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, I can't stand that when people try to take it higher than what the person's doing. Like right. this person. Yeah. They're just bringing your food out and like doing everything short of feeding it to you. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to be like, it was burnt. Like, shut up. Well, like, my, my brother with uh, Uber Eats, it, it's not Uber Eats around here. This is, like, the one time in the past 20 years where, like, a startup industry hasn't just been taken over by one company, you know? Like, Facebook mm-hmm. dominates, right? And then when, yeah, dude, when it like, owns. When, it's so fucking badass. It's, no, I mean... Like just market wise. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, my gamer no. speak was getting a little, yeah. a little. No, 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 no. Uh, what? What? Actually, you're right, dude. Facebook's fucking. God, what a badass! <laughs> what a badass service! I love it. <laughs> dude, uh, it's epic. <laughs> it is epic. But Uber is the same way. Like they, they came up with the concept and they just grabbed. Like Lyft tried to compete, but <laughs> let's be honest here. I don't think they're doing nearly as well as Uber. But then like the the service, like ordering food, getting it to your house, there's like eight different ones you can choose from. And in town, there's one called Bite Squad. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, I, what kind of name is that? I, I don't know. I looked it up and uh, the fucking, they're not even regional. It's, they have some in Tallahassee and then they have some in like Michigan and then they have some in like Arkansas, like they're all over, but there's no, I, I guess they just, it was like three brothers or something. They're like, you take Michigan, you take whatever. <laughs> it's like Nevada or something. We'll meet yeah. in the middle, conquer. We'll meet up in Boise or some shit. And, <laughs> and, and when my brother orders it, he, d- he's like, he doesn't tip. And I'm like, he's like, well, I mean, like, what if I can't afford it? I'm like you're well then don't fucking do it <laughs> yeah i definitely i definitely agree with that like you should be eating worse. out if you're they're not bringing it from the kitchen to your table they're bringing it across yeah. the fucking <laughs> town and driving to you <laughs> like uh it would be different if it was set up in a way where they didn't rely on that but like yeah. i feel like since they rely on tips it's like well i mean it's expected like if you're going to eat out you tip i just like i said i mean if you're not if you're not kind of nice to me, well, hey, I mean, I'm not going to be giving you that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, well, I was pissed uh, off, dude. I ordered a, a Bite Squad, and you can leave like a, an I extra. Can I call it something else, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, when you call it Bite Squad. <laughs> dude, I, that's so stupid. <laughs> I ordered a, a Speed Foods. I don't know. like what else hey, you thanks. That's better. <laughs> yeah. I ordered that, and you can leave like a message for your driver. And I told him to do a uh, like do a Tokyo drift into my driveway, and he didn't. He pulled in safely, and I was like, "Oh, that's stupid, dude." <laughs> that affected, I wouldn't tip. I that, wouldn't tip for that. <laughs> that affected his score considerably. <laughs> dude, I gotta say, um, about your podcast set, <laughs> yeah, is a. Uh, is that like just two paces to the left of your living room, or where where is this located? <laughs> It's uh, it's in the same room as my office, like my re- where I do my regular video gaming. Okay, I got you. I was looking at your set. It's like it's really interesting. <laughs> you're uh, you're you're on top of a Minecraft like like crafting mat, like a yeah. cutting mat. What the fuck? You have like a you have like a four foot coaster for your diet, Dr Pepper, that you're <laughs> sipping in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm thinking about changing the podcast from Forehead Fables to uh, Aspartame Boys. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> and you just give everyone a Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> or a Diet Coke. When are you going to uh, actually animate the uh, little picture you have to the to the left-hand side of your set? Oh, you know, yeah. get like get like them talking. Like, get the, like record their video like and a, overlay yeah. it. You know, just I add was... more work for you yourself. I, I, well, you know, I was actually going to put out one for you, but then I realized I don't think you have your face leaked yet. No, I don't. So I, I, could, I could just put the picture frame up and have a random picture of somebody. Oh, yeah, that would work, dude. Uh, or, uh, this is what uh, Charborg looks like. You're, I'm going to put a picture of Steve Harvey in there. <laughs> dude, I want you to manually animate the mouth or like go into After Effects and set it to a to an audio track to where whenever I talk, it just, it animates the mouth. That's, I, I'm yeah, not maybe, gonna be satisfied maybe, with. Maybe when you get a million subs, I'd do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you talked about how you're gonna do like, you know, everybody does three podcasts or so and then they yeah. stop. I yeah. feel like this is gonna be the nail in the coffin for your podcast. This is the last one. I feel one. like the guests have, have progressively just gotten worse and now it's on me. Well, I started this at podcast such a high. isn't gonna have, I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. You started just talking alone 
I feel like that was the absolute high point of this podcast. That was the peak, yeah. And then, you know, you got the, the transgender porn star. And then, you know, that was pretty epic. And then now it's just sort of trickling down. You're asking your fucking, your cousin's buddy. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> I was going to, uh, I might be going to PAX West. Are you going to PAX West? Uh, no, probably not. Have you ever been to one of those convention things? Uh, convention, but that was only because it was relatively close to me. Oh, okay. I was thinking about going to this one. You know, I usually try to avoid those things because they, uh, the idea of a convention kind of weirds me out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, uh, you know, it's just a bunch of dudes circle jerking each other. But then I thought, you know, I could pack up all of my mic equipment into a suitcase and then just bring like an extra pair of undies, go up there and set up uh, the podcast in the hotel room <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and dude. track down people and be like, yo, come back to my hotel room. That's and terrifying. I'm sure people would be all for it. <laughs> and then do a podcast. As they walk in, I just lock the door, the deadbolt behind them. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. You're not you turn leaving. those, turn the fucking, uh, turn the hotel, like, doors around, like, to where you can fucking come in and you can't exit without that key. And yeah, the key card. Yeah. They got to do this podcast with you. I just, I, as soon as they <laughs> walk in, I just eat it. Like, I eat the card. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking sat on the fluffy hotel bed while you're just sitting there watching them. <laughs> Dude, you need to do this. This is next level. That's what I was thinking, I was thinking about doing it. I think it would be you hilarious because be cool. the lighting would be so bad because it's a hotel yeah. room. They always have bad lighting. Yeah. At least from what I've it, seen from uh, hotel room porns. <laughs> The lighting oh, yeah, really definitely. Yeah. You want to know something interesting? I was thinking about this actually yesterday. I I don't know a single porn star except Riley Reed, and I don't even know what she looks like. And I feel like this would hit hard with you because I feel like you're quite the uh, advocate for porn. Uh, no, I've never seen it before, but uh, I've I've just heard tell of it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not that shocking. I just feel yeah. like you no, might I can't have... see, I can't imagine you whacking out to porn. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you I seem don't... like such a little goody two shoes, dude. I don't even think I've seen my dick before. <laughs> I, I sit when I pee, even. <laughs> so wait, so you don't like look at you know? Is it that you don't know porn stars because you look at exclusively amateur pornography? Because I know that's a niche. Some people are just into <laughs> no. amateurs, or do you just not look at it at all? No, I just don't really look at it. I mean, occasionally I'll browse like a subreddit or something, but yeah. it's not like, I'm not like, dude, you go in the comments and they're like, oh, this is so-and-so uh, yeah. from these four uh, trilogy, this trilogy, actually. Yeah. I'm not, I, dude, I don't know about all that. Like, I'll just watch a, I'll watch a boob kind of swing around for a minute, but I mean, that's <laughs> just really the one, extent Just of one. It. Everything <laughs> yeah. in moderation. I don't, <laughs> when it's more than one dit. You know, I don't want to, that's too much. Wait, so, you know, I realized I had a problem when, like, someone, uh, they, they showed me, like, a. they were like, dude, look at this fucked up nipple. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's Faye Reagan's nipple. It. I recognized <laughs> the nipple. I was like, that's Faye Reagan's nipple. She's got puffy nipples. <laughs> dude, well, I, I guess I was lying, because I know, uh, what's that song, uh, that Mia Khalifa? I, I, I've heard yeah. that name before, too, but, again, I don't know what she looks like. I couldn't uh, let me tell you something. Uh, Talking about nip. nipples, I could recognize her nipples because I don't know how she got so big as a porn star because she has like the most ratchet boob job of all time. It looks really? like oh my god, it looks like someone took a can opener and like cut off her nipple. Pull pull then, up an image of this. Put <laughs> put, put this on screen, <laughs> dude. I'll fucking I'll pull up an image right now. I'll, I'll show it to you. Hold on, Mia Khalifa nipple. Mia Khalifa. Nipple, you gotta see this thing. It is all, it's yeah, it's too. I don't it's know, scarred it up, too defined, and yeah, and it looks like someone cut off a nipple, like Ed Gein or Frankenstein, and they just <laughs> yeah. stapled it back on. It's like a leather face nipple. Bro, I don't it's like see Mr. Potato shit. Head. Yeah, <laughs> they just popped on something. That's like that up. could easily you grab on the nip and pull that off, and you could put an ear there and see. Yeah, like why? Just stick with your regular boobs. I'm sure they look fine before. Yeah, and your Go, nipple looks like a human that? nipple. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna track that bitch down. I'm ne tell next her. time you see her, yeah, just let her know. Hey, miss, pardon me, miss. I think your breasts were fine beforehand. <laughs> before you might want to uh, get a time machine, go back in time before you made that horrible <laughs> mistake. How much yeah. do porn stars make? Because I'm sure they could probably afford a time machine, right? I don't think they make that much. Really? I thought yeah. I thought you get like a 
shitload of money for like getting some jizz on you. No, I don't think they make that much. I think male porn stars make even less. Really? Yeah, I think uh, females make well because they're in demand. Nobody really cares about the guy, you know. And then, uh, uh, but the females, and it's weird. You can tell. I bet you they don't make a whole lot because they. Uh, it's a depressing line of work. I feel like. And most yeah. of the people that are in it are either uh, they either have like some sort of super high sex drive to the point where it's it's some sort of like they're like hammering issue. their fucking vagina. Yeah, they got like a jackhammer or something. <laughs> it's either like a mental issue or they're uh, on drugs, you know, and so they use it to like pay for the the drugs. Oh damn! I didn't yeah. even think about that, dude. It, like, there's a lot, dude. You know, when you've been when you've looked at it as much as I've looked at, it, you look at some scenes and you're like, she's fucked up on something. <laughs> she, there's something she's on, and she's gonna take the money from this shoot and go buy more of it, whatever. The <laughs> <laughs> money from this yeah. shoot. Ew, dude, now gross, that, okay, dude. if you want to get the charborg experience, you need to watch a, a porno documentary because there it's it, it i've never seen a happy one i've never seen why is that called the charborg experience what? well because it, it after you watch it you you can't in good conscience watch porn anymore <laughs> oh so, i saw uh yeah. i saw this one partial documentary where it's called like uh like hot girls wanted or something i yeah. think i i think i saw part of that where it's like talking about how kind of fucked up it is and, uh, and, you know, that's really why I haven't pursued these uh, pornographic desires that I have so often. I bet you have sex with regular women, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah? You fuck. I- I'm pretty vanilla, you know. This Just guy sex calls with women. himself a gamer and has sex with women? Oh, my God. Come on, dude. Don't roast Pathetic. me. Pathetic. <laughs> you are so fucking lucky you uploaded that Kentucky video. <laughs> why? Because I was like... Well, first I contacted you. I was like, okay, I gotta get this guy on here. And then, and then I and then I started doing research. And I started looking, and I oh was like, God. I was like, this piece of shit <laughs> is uploaded like a quote videos. unquote full time YouTuber. <laughs> uploaded Dude, I three got, months ago. <laughs> was your last got, upload. I've been getting lucky because just random shit from my past has been blowing up, and so like this video I don't even remember making <laughs> just got like over a million views. And oh, I'm like, oh well, this month is covered. Like, oh, you you're I'm just, just a lazy lucky. ass. That's what it is. You're just a lazy ass. <laughs> I'm not, dude. I'm not, dude. Yeah. I, something that drives me crazy is when people comment and they're like, they're like, where the fuck did you go upload? And I'm like, I I literally work eight hours a day on this shit, dude. Yeah. Like, it drives me crazy when well, I see people. That's say why stuff I was like saying that. the Kentucky thing saved your ass because I went to go watch it. And, uh, and I've never seen anything like I've, I've done things where like, I'll, I'll have a, uh, I'll record. Right. And then I'll, I'll get like a cohesive narrative from whatever I have footage wise. And then, and then I'll go in and I'll film in some like extra junket stuff that I can kind of throw in yeah. there in like the replay editor. But you did an entire, it's like a 30 minute video done <laughs> in the replay editor. <laughs> synced up audio wise. Dude. I, like every day, I wanted to kill myself. It was uh, uh, so me, fucking bad. How? Okay, there. Well, part of me says, "Congratulations, you." That is the most work I've ever seen anybody do on a GTA video. Great job. And the other and part the other of me part. says, "You took this like Asperger's Kubrick work mentality to a fucking GTA <laughs> video." <laughs> like what? You... I know, dude. I, it all stems. It all stems from a deep-rooted hatred of money. <laughs> and see, if I liked money, I would just make content. But there's something in my brain that d- just doesn't let me just make content. I don't know why. <laughs> it, I think I think I just hate money. I think that's probably what it sums up to. And then your your stupid ass, like you'll you'll DM me an unlisted thirty-second video. <laughs> You've done this a couple <laughs> times. You had that uh, <laughs> that ghost man or uh, what's his name? Ghost main, yeah, ghost main. Yeah, he, he he like made like this, uh, <laughs> an edit of that with a barking dog, <laughs> which cranks <laughs> well, me dude, up. My work process is: I wake up in the morning. I my like my work schedule. I don't know how you do it, but I work basically the same schedule as my girlfriend. So yeah, I'll wake up in the morning, and bef- like while I'm drinking coffee and shit, 
getting ready to start working, I'll be like, dude, what if this guy was barking the song? And then I'll make like a quick edit before I actually get started. So I've got like a shitload of random unlisted stuff. But uh, that's not for a lack of uh, working. That's just, I'm like, oh, hey, what if I did this before I did this? Uh, the uh, You ever have, well, I, uh, you do have those moments, but I have those too where you'll have like a video idea and it's like funny in your mind. And then, um, and, but you know, it's too short to ever make into a video. Yeah. You know, and dude, uh, I, my, one of my favorite ones that you did was you just did a, a Nirvana smells like teen spirit cover. <laughs> and I was just yelling. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> la, la, la. and that video could have been a quarter of the length it was because it was like, you could have just done the first line and that would just cut it. And that would have been it. But it was like 30 seconds. And yeah, I know you were like sitting the there. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were sitting there and you were like, what if I just like took that grunge vocal mentality to the max? <laughs> Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, dude, I think one thing is after every single thing that I've made, after everything I've made, I regret making it. And I'm like, like, I feel like I improve after, after I upload it. Yeah. And so like, I can't watch stuff that I've made, even like this Kentucky video that I just made. I'll probably never watch this shit again because it's like, I try to, I try to do better after everything. So like stuff from a year ago. I would probably die if I watched it. I don't think I could bring myself to watch it. The only way I'll watch stuff of mine is if it if it's like an old video where I'm having fun with friends, you know? Because it's like you're reliving that experience. Yeah, and then now you're just alone and depressed all the time. Yeah. And you look yeah. back on the good days. Yeah, I look back on the good days. Now, uh, I played Cards Against Humanity with a bunch of my friends on New Year's. And, yeah, I saw uh, that. And you like, like broke your back or something no, from laughing I, so hard. I was wheezing so hard, I gave myself a hernia. Like, I was, <laughs> Dude, I was laughing such an old me. man. Yeah, I know, right? So, like, I'll watch that video back and like, I'll cry laughing. I don't think it's that funny of a video, <laughs> to be honest. It has no structure. It's just me laughing for like thirteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it was a fun night. So I will like watch that again. But then there's some that I'll sit there and pour over. Like editing wise, and then uh, and but I'll never watch it ever, yeah, because it's just me solo. I don't want to rewatch. I'm you know, uh, I think every YouTuber is an egomaniac, but I'm not that much of an egomaniac. <laughs> I'm gonna rewatch yeah, yeah. one, dude. Yeah. You know, there's people though who just like obsess over their shit and that like they make something and they're like, oh my god, I'm the fucking best in the world. I can't stand when when people get like a, like like a tiny ass viewer base. And then they just think they're the greatest in the world. Uh, it's so cringy think, to me. I think that's why uh, people hated Frankie on PC so I much. I don't know who the fuck that is. He was like the biggest Daisy slash battlefield guy. Uh, battle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He played a lot of battlefield. You've never seen a Frankie on PC in 1080p video. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might recognize something, but I don't watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Okay. But he, he was like, the guy for cinematic, serious role play gameplay shit, and he would, and you would see this was back when uh, YouTube was different. Like if if you were a creator and you commented on somebody else's video, like it would sometimes like send you a notification or something like that if you were sub mm. to him. And you would see all the time if I went to like another Battlefield video or a Daisy video, he would just be in the comments and be like, "Wow, why didn't you spend as much time editing like I spend on my videos?" Oh my god, like, dude. He was such an <laughs> asshole. And then he left to be a lawyer or something, which makes sense, you know, if you're a fucking scumbag. I guess a lawyer is the perfect yeah, guy. You fit right in with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably shitting on other lawyers. Why didn't you spend as much time researching on your case like I did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's just in the wrong and, you know, he's yeah. just defending this fucking dickhead who killed like eight people. <laughs> did you see that whole Jeffrey Epstein thing? Yeah, where he, uh, like, quote unquote, killed himself or whatever. Yeah. I didn't look into it, but I just, just from what I've seen people talking about it. The, uh, well, did you hear about like his whole past? Like the reason why they think he didn't kill himself? Mm, no, I don't even know what he did. <laughs> I honestly, like I, I haven't kept up with that. The, uh, he was like a financier, but he would also, he, I think he had like a private jet is what it was. And he would kind of socialize with, uh, uh, the, the 1%. 
I guess I'll just shut, shut that dog up, please. I'm good, dude, I'm gonna go out there and beat that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but before I do it, I'm gonna go live on Twitch. By God, <laughs> and they won't ban me because I'll have a, a halter top on while I'm doing it. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. She's no, just she barked. Florida. I, she, she's in the Florida heat. What the fuck? Irresponsible hot, dog owner. God, I could feel the I could feel the house shaking when Sam got up. Man, I took this opportunity to get another Diet Coke. Damn, dude, you're just draining these things. You need to slow down. I, I think you should slow down on your Diet Coke intake. Dude, shh. <laughs> That's the sound of a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's frothy. You know what? I think I'm going to partake, too. Oh, shit. Cracking a cold one with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So anyways, back to uh, kid fucker Epstein. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, Let's stay on topic, please. Yeah. He uh, he would have like a, a jet, I think is what it was. And then Dude, he would I'm already have, jealous of this guy. What uh, the fuck? Right? Jesus Christ. And he, and he would get like the 1% on there, including like uh, Prince Andrew, I think, from England. And, and, uh, and Mia Khalifa, she was there. <sighs> Mia Khalifa was there. And, uh, and uh, Trump, maybe. Uh, the, oh, the Clintons. They were on there, and uh, and he would just kind of uh, socialize with people. But the the thing is that he also got busted for he he got arrested for uh, being a pedophile. Apparently, a lot of the people that he would have like escorts and stuff on his plane that were underage, Ooh. as young as thirteen years old. So then he goes to prison. They have him on suicide watch, and then uh, for five days they take him off a of suicide watch. He kills himself. The mystery. The conspiracy theory is that he got killed by people like the Clintons or like Prince Andrew or whatever. Oh, because they got some dirt. Because like he he's had got dirt. dirt on him. Yeah. And they and, didn't want him to talk. Uh-huh. Uh, like uh, like they were all up in uh, a mile up in the sky having sex with kids up in a plane. And well, yeah. I mean, airspace works different, right? Because, you know, that's got its own It's international waters. waters. Yeah. yeah or can, international airs. You can slap airs. a kid around. Yeah. I don't know what the rules are up there. Only God can judge you there, you know? <laughs> yeah, and if he can see you. If he, but you're in a plane. He can't see you. They had yeah, the curtains exactly. drawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> um, but it, what cracks me up is that if you look at half these conspiracy theorists out there, <clears throat> they talk about like there being this giant pedophile ring of the powerful and everything. Now, let me do a major hypothetical here. Okay. Let's say you're a rich and powerful person, top of your business, right? You're like Forbes 500 type rich person. Okay, I like where this is going. With like me <laughs> yeah. specifically or just is okay, go ahead. You see, and 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 I am also that way, right? Oh my god. We're two super rich guys. Now, where does the pedophilia come in? <laughs> here's where the kid fucking comes in. <clears throat> You also happen to have uh, an interest in the worst possible thing you could possibly do in society besides being like a serial killer, which is being a child a fascination molester. fascination for children. <laughs> yeah. What do you think are the odds that of, of like us meeting at, at like a, uh, uh, you know, like a cocktail party or something? And we're shaking hands, and you're like, oh, you're in charge of uh, uh, the oil pipelines. Heard that's a, a profitable business. And then uh, and then I'm like, oh, you're, you know, the CEO of Boeing or something like that? That sounds like, you know, flying around. That seems like a profitable business. Uh, hey, I'm also into fucking kids. Are you? And then you're like, oh, yeah. I am too, by God. <laughs> How does that come We up? should go hang out with Epstein. He likes fucking kids too. We'll make a, a circle of uh, elite flying around the world. Fucking kid. Like, if you had that... As a fetish, that would be the last thing you would ever tell anybody, especially some asshole cutthroat businessman that's worth billions of dollars. Yeah, how does shit like that form? That does, it I'm, doesn't. I'm like, now it that doesn't I'm form. That's it. the point. There's no way that all these billionaires are like, yeah, we collectively like fucking kids. We tell each other, but not anybody else. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, maybe what it is is like, oh no, that doesn't make sense. I was gonna say maybe you know you're just kind of ended like the the kid type. Uh, the kid type uh and you just show up at one of these parties and you see maybe a dude you recognize you're like oh wait aren't you that famous guy oh but see yeah. that wouldn't make sense because it's like why would they be going to these parties if they could be recognized <laughs> right 
Yeah, you would think it would be like a. Uh, you ever seen Eyes Wide Shut? Yeah, 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 yeah. They all have like the masks on. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, it's well, just, maybe we just don't understand because we aren't uh, child molesters. You know. God, this might be one of those things where we're gonna have to uh, do some. Uh, what's that? The kind of method acting. You know, we're gonna have to get into the part oh, to really yeah, understand. <laughs> And then, like in like one week, when we're arrested because we don't last well, long, that's when we'll like, have oh, our epiphany. Under- we'll be like, "Oh, <laughs> that's how it happened." In order to fully understand the Epstein, you must become the Epstein. We're like, "I'm sorry, officer. <laughs> Listen, when I when I sucked that uh, underage wiener, I didn't mean it." And they're like, "Oh, okay." I was no researching for a role. That's what you're telling me. I was doing <laughs> yeah. research. <laughs> it's like Christian Bale, how he lost all that weight. Did you see how much he like lost all that weight from the machinist? And which, then, yeah, and then got it all back for fucking. What did he do? Was it Batman? The first bat. That's what everybody <laughs> everybody talks about. The machinist. They're like, look how skinny he got. I'm like, that's not what's impressive. What's yeah. impressive is he went from uh, fucking Napoleon Dynamite's brother to <laughs> to fucking Bruce Wayne in six months. Yeah, dude. I can't, dude. I can't even fucking ride my bike without getting out of breath. Like, how did he do that shit? I, I, he was frail. Yeah, he was frail. And like, he, he I went to uh, set up for a baby shower over the weekend, and I had to uh, carry uh, like sixty folding chairs. And the next day, I like couldn't get out of bed. Like, I was, <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> it was so I can't sore. walk down my driveway to check the mail without fucking getting winded. I, I, I've got mail built up for like four days. <laughs> you know what's funny is I was a uh, but uh, when I was really fat, right at my peak when I was you know laughing at Cards Against Humanity and getting hernias. I was, uh, <laughs> can't breathe right because <laughs> your fucking neck folds. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there. Every fat person has this uh, this thought. You look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, you know, deep down under there, there's some muscle. You know, because fat makes somewhere. you look somewhere. A, 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 fat makes you look a little bit muscular. You know, like there might be some muscle under there. It's a mystery. Is that what fat people tell each other? Yeah, that's what they themselves? tell each other. You know, it's hey, I, I'm heavy. I take hey, a lot of muscle muscular. to move around. You know, my legs might be strong. Something, but uh, I I lost a bunch of weight and and I realized that there is no muscle under there. You're just. <laughs> You're, dude you're on your own here yeah look like my little fucking i got these little gamer arms man like <laughs> so spindly i have these little spindly arms dude i got knobby elbows <laughs> i can't i can't rest these bitches on anything because i get gamer elbow no i, I realize it's truly a rough lifestyle if i sit on the floor dude i can feel my pelvis like touching the floor and it does not yeah. feel i don't have butt Ugh. cheeks i'm you're butt creeping me out. yeah <laughs> that's Not disgusting. Good. Yeah, I feel like putting it looks some like a skeleton on. that fell in like plaster or something. <laughs> yeah, you ever seen that uh, Chernobyl TV show on HBO? Dude, I'm so into that show. Oh my god! It oh, was you so are. Good. Is it? Yeah. If you you're gonna it? make fun of it, if you're gonna make fun of it, that's fine. But I love that show. No, no, so no, much. no. That that was. It's the fucking highest rated audience rated TV show in history. Oh really? Yeah. Damn. It's ninety seven. No, nine point seven out of ten. Is what I got. Well, I'm not sure how the rating system works, but that seems pretty high to me. Yeah, it's out of ten, so it's not like nine point seven out of a hundred. But <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's a shit show. But the uh, uh, doesn't that show make you fucking scared of radiation, dude? I, after that, I was like standing back from the microwave, dude. I was I was getting worried. <laughs> and I have Man. spent all of my my 28 years. Every time I'm cooking something, I sit there and look through. Yeah, dude. I, <laughs> I look fucking, through the glass and watch it spin. I know I'm going to get me, my rods and cones it, are all fucked up from all the radiation. <laughs> it makes me think twice about looking through that hole my stepdad punched in the microwave, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like to watch my food cook anymore. <laughs> oh, man. But the, uh, when he's looking like a cheese pizza, though, oh my god! When he's kind of yeah, when, where he's like, look over the edge and t- and see if the reactor's still there. And he, it, they had that camera shot where they're looking up and he looks over the edge and he just turns and <laughs> it's like Dude, those I, it's like those Papa John's co- or the DiGiorno commercials where it shows like the the time lapse of the pizza cooking in the oven and he goes like, yeah. and <laughs> he looks like the Fortnite tomato man. You know the guy with the big tomato head and mustache. <laughs> he gets Dude, so that shot though. though. 
<laughs> that shot was so badass. I, I couldn't get over it. How like yeah. it doesn't show the reaction. He just peeks over, and the camera's just zooming in on him, and he turns yeah. around. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was dude, like, fucking. Damn. All you need to see was a smoke, and then look away. Like he would have lived, oh. you know, maybe three years. But like the way he got hit in the face with that, because he yeah, kept looking. Dude. He was like, yeah, that's just blown up. I'm like, you don't have to look that long, dude. Maybe he already realized that he was fucked just <laughs> even being there. Still, yeah. you know, might as well get a good gander, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but what's or maybe funny he just really that, wanted to spite those men. The, the dudes were like, "Nah, the reactor, the reactor is fine." Blah 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 blah. blah. He was like, "Oh, I'll show you how." I'll come back is. from that roof looking like dog shit. And you <laughs> you have dude. no choice except for to accept that it happened. That's They're what like, would have been great is if they would have shown him coming back because the guy sent did. him out of the room. They did. They did. Okay. Yeah, he came back and he sat at the table and they're just screaming at him and it's silent. It's just like silent as it's slowly zooming away and he's just sat there and they're like screaming about how like what it's impossible. Or <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. You just spent too long on the beach. You just took vac- a quick vacation when I told you to check the reactor. He walked out of the room and dunked his face in a coffee pot and then came back. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all fucked up. Now, what's funny, though, is that that show gives you, like, great insight as to how the Soviet Union worked. Like, it was like a bureaucracy, like a yeah. big company. Because everybody was scared to go to their superior to be the bearer of bad news, right? Yeah. The uh, Dude, I fucking love that show. I, I want Like, after I finished it, I wanted to start it back up and watch it again. It was so good. Yeah, it was good. The have you seen the uh the missile explosion that happened in like Siberia this week? No, I haven't. Well, what's funny about Chernobyl is they uh everybody was like, Hey, there's um uh did you guys have an accident? And they were like, Nah. <laughs> and then uh and their official statement was nothing happened. And um and then everybody was like, Well, we detect radiation and they were like, Nah Something small happened. <laughs> yeah, something small happened. Well, just like last week or a couple of days ago, there was a massive nuclear explosion in Russia on the northern coast. And uh, and people are like, hey, what happened? And they were like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and they're like, well, there was a major radiation spike. And they're like, something small happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's a leaked video of a, it's just a giant mushroom cloud over the horizon. Like, you what just. What the fuck? <laughs> A giant nuclear bomb goes off in in Russia, and they're like, "Yeah, there it, it happens to be uh, something small happened at the. They have like a missile testing site, a super secret missile testing, which nothing's super secret anymore. They we got Google Maps, dude. If you type in Russia yeah, yeah. super secret missile site, they'll tell you how to get there, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I, I saw Area Fifty One. People are going there. I, I looked up the Google Map, and it looks kind of boring. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see any uh, aliens lying around. <laughs> yeah, not even a single fucking footprint. Right. I, I, I enhanced. You know what's funny is they. <laughs> okay, so for like, I don't. Are you like a Christian or anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you super Christian? No, I'm not religious. No, okay. All right. So I didn't want to like piss you off, but you know when you're in like uh, humanities courses in college and stuff, they they tell you that. There's because history, it, it's so many years ago, there's no definitive, like, here's the point the inception of Christianity as a religion, right? And mm-hmm. but they, they can sit there and go, like, oh, but there's aspects of like the Epic of Gilgamesh that carry over to Jesus. There's uh, Zoroastrianism that has a lot of ties to Christianity. And so you can see where like Christianity took things from other religions in order to make theirs. But there's not enough definitive proof for like Christians to just call it off. They're like, nah, 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 I'm sticking to it. I believe it. But fast forward 2000 years. And we're uh, now we're at a point where like the flat earth society, there's people that dead ass believe the earth is flat and you can find the guy that started it. And yeah. he was like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's a joke. That was, that was started. Dude, I don't understand. That's like the <laughs> most unreal thing to me because when I first heard about that, when that was getting popular, I was like, oh, this is just people joking. But then, like, you see shit where people aren't joking. And yeah. you're like, are you serious? Like, there's, what are you talking about? There's legit people that believe it. And and then the same thing with, like, Area 51. Like, it was started as a joke. The guy that started it was like, 
obviously a joke. And then it got so big that there's people that are legitimately taking it seriously now, like rating area 51. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It hit my local news and like my local newscaster was so dead ass serious about it. He was like, uh, and the official page says, and I quote, we want to see them aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. And didn't the whole thing start from like a dude watching the Joe Rogan podcast? And he was know. just kind of like, oh, this would be a funny joke. Yeah. Like, let's raid Area 51. They can't shoot us all or whatever. Yeah, they can't get and us all. And then everyone's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a real good idea. And there's always going to be some idiot to Arizona or that takes, he's got to take it seriously and show up. Yeah, I think there's going to be a, a handful of idiots that take it seriously and show up. Yeah, and uh, I think it, I think nothing will really happen. It's going to be another Kent State massacre, really. Dude, what do they uh, think is going to happen though? Like, I don't understand. Like they're going to lit them in. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to show up because yeah. what I've read is like, it's like a military base with multiple checkpoints of only one road in, like. Like the road has checkpoints in it to where you physically can't drive a car. Yeah, like, it's, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna walk know. like fifteen miles through the desert and g- knock on the front gate. I don't understand. What's funny is they're just gonna get there and see shit they don't understand because it, it it's a a secret aircraft testing facility. So they're just, <laughs> they're gonna be so it's gonna be funny though. It, like hypothetically, let's say all the guards are missing, right? Like they all take a coffee break at the same time. Everybody shows up, breaks in. <laughs> They're going to be wandering around airplanes that do things that they couldn't even comprehend looking for aliens and disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> They're going to yeah. be like, fuck this stupid <laughs> invisible Wonder Woman jet. Where's the aliens, guys? <laughs> like, they have Dude. shit there that I'm sure costs billions of dollars and they just want to see aliens. <laughs> I don't even know what Area 51 actually is. Is it just like a military uh, air air? Or whatever. Yeah, it's a, like where they make experimental planes. Yeah, and experimental crazy, planes. Wacky. That's what it is, and and missiles and stuff and drones. That's where they like test all that crap. At least that's what it was in the fifties, and that's what it I think still is. Dude, yeah. it, there's I feel like there's a high chance it might just be nothing now, and they're just gonna show up and be like, "This kind of is lame." I don't know though, dude. I I feel. I mean, I might get a ticket and go. You asked if I went to conventions. I might. I mean, I don't. That's the one convention, but I might thirsting to go to. Dude, you should. You should honestly. What you said about doing the podcast. You should just take a fucking folding table and just do a podcast at Area Fifty (laughs) One. Yeah. Talk to talk to all the different people. people, Mia Khalifa's lumpy nip. (laughs) Get their feedback and input. The the people. I think like the biggest concern would be people showing up to area 51 with like guns because <laughs> it's a possibility, mm-hmm. you know, uh, cause people are going wild now going on like crazy shooting sprees. But, um, you know, that deep down in area 51, they have to have, have you ever seen those like array things that they'll put on top of a van and it just shoots like microwaves in a direction and it just like melts your skin. Have you ever seen Oh my this? God, we're going to see some vaporization and on the area. I mean, it doesn't kill lot. you. It just makes you go. Ah! Like it just, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those where like, it's for like crowd control. Like if there's just a crowd of people at a gate and you don't want to kill them, you don't, you don't oh, they just, just blast them. them. They just blast them with it. And you it give like, them a loud sound or something. Yeah. It's just like putting them in, in a microwave for like 10 seconds. Like it just, <laughs> it, it, it just heats them up a lot. It just defrosts a yeah. bit. And, and like, I've out. seen it where they'll, they'll like people get hit by it and they'll just jump and like, they're just trying to get away from it. The, it doesn't matter oh what God. you're doing. I think uh, the video I saw was they told a guy to um, like get something from uh, the middle of a field and like, and they were like, you have to get it. And so like, and he knew he was going to get hit with it. Right. And he was trying everything to get to it. And then they hit him with it. And he, it was like he was running and he gets hit by it and he just immediately drops to the ground. Like he got tased and then just starts running away in a different direction. Like he's like, Dude, this was like, like a trained special forces guy. Like he the was way like he's describing this sounds like a jackass skit where they <laughs> just get this fucking blaster. And shoot him. They're like, Hey, we left something in the middle of this field. Why don't you go <laughs> grab it? Go grab it. Yeah. But apparently it doesn't do any like long-term harm. I mean, as that they seems, that they know that of. seems a bit odd to me, because, right? Dude, after watching everything, 
everything seems like it's gonna do a little bit of harm yeah I, like i'm terrified of shit i wouldn't if i was ever tortured i would like i don't even know what i would do like i mean that microwave gun is one thing but like i mean if someone just bent my finger back and was like hey what i mean what is this secret i'd be like dude i'll tell I'll you i'll tell anything. you anything yeah. you want to know dude i will Whatever, suck a though. cock the second they open the door i would <laughs> They don't even have to have anything in their hands. Not even like torture tools. <laughs> yeah. You know, like in the movies where they roll out the the thing of pliers and sharpened screwdrivers and yeah, needles sort of and get stuff. your blood pumping before yeah. they start. They, the guy just has to walk in the room, and I'd be like, "All right, like, give me my even give nice me my too. deposition like, papers. I will write down whatever you want." And sign he's like it. a kind-hearted person. He's just like, "Hello, my name," and you're like, "Listen, here's everything, <laughs> yeah. dude." I'd be so intimidated if I was being tortured, like that scene in a. Uh, in Reservoir Dogs, when he's got that fucking switchblade and he cuts that man's ear off, and yeah, all that shit, dude. If that happened to me, I don't even know what I would do. I would probably like it makes me want to keep a cyanide pill just handy at any point in case I ever in my life were to get tortured, right? I just pu- fucking chew on that bitch. Have you ever seen the the ones from Vietnam where they would they would plant bamboo and then they would just oh, they would tie would you over up. it? Yeah, it would grow up through you. Yeah, dude. I remember also on uh. On Lost, whenever they fucking shove those, that stick or whatever under the man's fingernails. Yeah, man, dude, I don't, I don't think I can handle pain well. No, nah, I don't either. You know, uh, I talked to a guy that worked as a, uh, and and like he was the quote unquote interrogator for the, um, I think he was in the army, and he was over in, I think he was in Iraq, and he, <laughs> I was like, so what kind of shit do you do? And he's like, well, there's the Geneva Convention, so we can't do, like, this is an official our, military. Our fun thing. is spoiled now. Yeah we, yeah, we can't do any mustard gas stuff or anything. So, uh, or uh, take pliers to them. So what they do is they do just, like, shitty psychological things where they'll keep them in a, uh, in a, a room with a concrete bed. And it'll be super cold in there. And he, he's like, he's like, dude, that just sounds like my room. <laughs> it just sounds like a normal day for me. He says there's like, it's like good cop, bad cop, except there is no bad cop. The room is the bad cop. You know, like the room's just cold and, and, and he'll walk in and he'll be like, oh, dude, how you doing, man? You doing good? What'd you have for breakfast? And the guy's like, oh, I had shit. I had, it was shitty food. And he's like, dude, hey, you know what? I'll get you something better to eat right now. We got hot stuff in the in the canteen. I just saw it uh, a second ago when I was over there. And uh, d- wait, you don't have a mattress? Dude, I'll, I'll get you a mattress and a blanket. Dude, it's fucking cold in here. What the hell are you doing? Uh, you want like a deck of cards and stuff? Uh, Jesus Christ, the way they're keeping you. Uh, anyways, I know you, uh, you had some friends that were in the Taliban. Can you write their names down? And then it'd be like, and the guy would be like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't write that down. He's like, ah, well, all right. Well, if you can uh, remember them, I'll bring you back that blanket and those cards and that meal, you know, I'll be right back. Dude, (laughs) And it's like, after like the fourth day, the guy's like, all right, dude, I'll put the fucking names down. It's cold as fucking here. I'm tired of eating gruel. (laughs) It sucks. And so if you break it down. Technically, he wasn't mistreated by any one person. He was just neglected, which I, yeah, it's a gray area, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a. You're gonna look like shit going uh, in a tribunal against the American government and going, yeah, this guy kept promising me, uh, promising me a blanket, and never he never came back with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. He was nice as shit. Oh, so was he like a torture? No, no, no he was nice as hell. Uh, he just kept forgetting my blanket. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a shitty waiter. <laughs> it's like then you look back at like the fucking shit they used to do, like the the bull thing where they put a they put a man in an iron bull and yeah, light and it on fire. Them. Yeah, and then the screams sound like the bull going <laughs> or the uh, or the, the where they would find out if someone's a witch or not. Yeah, you know? they fucking chunk him in the lake, tied up or whatever. Yeah, they chuck him in a lake with a rock in their back, and they'd go like, "Hey, if if she sinks, she's not a witch." But if she floats, she's a witch. It's like, well, how do you tell? Well, after she dies, <laughs> we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll know after she's dead. It's a little bit of backwards thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, did God. you like that movie called The Witch? Oh, the one where it's like witch is spelled with two V's? Yeah. 
Dude. I know a lot of people thought it was really boring, but I thought that movie was pretty fucking cool. That movie had the most atmosphere of any horror movie I've ever watched. It was now. Fantastic. Here's a question: Did you see that that director's next movie that's coming out called The Lighthouse? No, I didn't. Wait, no, it's it's not out yet, but a trailer came out, dude. I'm is so it the one where it's pumped. like water creatures where they're like humanoid water people? Uh, no. From the looks of it, it looks like just two fucking boys up in their lighthouse. And they just go crazy together. <laughs> that's what that's what I'm getting from this movie. Oh, okay. it looks so cool though. Like, man, it makes me want to just fucking hang out with my boy and get drunk in a lighthouse in black and white and fucking you know chill with the boy. That that witch movie was great though. That was like it had such a dense like forested area. It just it was. Creepy. I loved it, yeah. dude. And I I was I kept going on about how much I loved it. And then we were having this movie night with my girlfriend and her parents. And they were like, oh, what about this? And I was like, oh, I love this movie. And then everyone hated it. And I was like, I just looked like a fucking dick. Yeah. They're like, that, that movie was boring, dude. They're like, it sucked. A- Abby's the same way, dude. I have movies that I watch with Abby, and then I have movies that I watch by myself. Yeah, dude, I've been slowly, slowly uh, sort of getting my girlfriend into movies um, because she doesn't like movies until she watches them. But she only the reason she likes them is because I cherry pick like the best shit for her to watch. Yeah. And so after you know after it's been fucking like eight years and she's slowly starting to enjoy movies, but it's um it's only because I've I like pick the best ones. Like I told her I was gonna go see that Quentin Tarantino movie, and she was like, "Oh, I want to come," and I'm like, "You won't like it. Please don't come with me. You won't like it." And she's like, "Oh, I'll come." And then she, I don't think she liked it. Really. Uh, yeah, dude, I mean, what's funny is that movie is like the most feel good Tarantino movie he's ever made. Yeah, that was odd. I, I wasn't yeah. expecting that because I didn't watch anything about it beforehand. It was like Jackie was Brown a, almost. Like, uh, have you ever seen that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And was, I really liked it though. Man. I mean, yeah, it was great. I liked after after I watched it, I liked it. During it, I, I thought it was kind of, wasn't too into it, how it didn't really have like a plot. But uh, after yeah, I, I thought loved about it, it after I thought about it, I, I've sort of come around, but. During it, I was kind of like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought it was great. The uh, that that ending, man, was fantastic. Oh my god, dude! I was <laughs> I was cracking the fuck up laughing, and then uh, my girlfriend was not. She was yeah. like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like when he's bashing her face in, for like a five minute segment or more, where he's just bashing <laughs> yeah. someone's face in, yeah. just over and over. And I was laughing so hard. And uh, I, I dude, there was some movie recently, or I say recently, it might have been the past like five years, but um, I thought it, there was like this scene that I thought was so fucking funny, but I was the only one in the theater who laughed. And so this fucked up thing happened and I crack up laughing and then immediately stop because nobody else in the room laughed. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, what the fuck? Uh, that's what separates the boys from the men, dude. When you go and watch uh, Pulp Fiction with somebody and when Marvin gets shot in the face. Yeah, yeah, it, That's yeah. the determining factor. Like half the people laugh, the other half don't, you know, <laughs> it's. It's funny. I think it's a hilarious scene, but a lot of people don't think it's funny at all. Dude, I, uh, there was this, when I went to see Hateful Eight, not, not Hateful Eight, what was it? Yeah, it was Hateful Eight. When I went to see that in theater, there was this lady I ran into on accident and knocked her popcorn out of her hand. And I was about to offer to pay for another popcorn for her. And she was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I was like, <laughs> Uh, and I just fucking left. I was like, bitch, I'm not paying for your popcorn. I was just about to offer to, I made a mistake. And anyway, so during the movie, when he's talking about his big black dick or whatever, he's like, you want to suck on my big black cock or whatever? No, it's dingus. Whatever he, he says that. Yeah, he says my big black dingus. <laughs> I glanced over and she was like, that same lady was like a couple seats to my right. And she was like looking horrified. <laughs> and that was like, that was like, oh man, it felt so good because. I was kind of pissed at her still. I'm still kind of mad to this day. Yeah. You know, like, do you ever have stuff like that where something happens forever ago and it doesn't really matter, but you're still just fucking furious? Uh, Not pissed about it. I have one where I'm like really embarrassed by something. Like I just, I always look back on it. What it was is I used to work at this apartment complex. Right. And I was, uh, uh, I was thankful that I had gotten the job is what it was. And I, it was the first time where I had had 
some money to go like bring because Abby had worked for a long time before me, <laughs> right? So I was like that boyfriend where I'm just kind of yeah, like a, just bum. a loser, yeah. And uh, and so I had this job and I was able to take her out for like a nice dinner date and stuff and pay for some shit and uh, and it felt good. And I was trying to tell my boss that I appreciated it, uh, that she had hired me and everything. And I did it like in front of everybody. Like he had gotten quiet right when I started talking to her. Cause I guess people were like, what's he going to say? And I was not a, a very socially. Oh my God, dude. I'm <laughs> getting cringed out thinking about this already. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, Hey Barbara, I really appreciate you. No, I didn't even say that. I was like, I was like, Hey, uh, um, I just wanted to say thanks. She's like, Oh yeah. What for? I just go, <laughs> I go, I have like so much money right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just quiet and she goes, Congratulations. I'm like, Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> and then you just like And then that's it. That, that was the end. And I was like left standing there and she was like, Okay. Like <laughs> like when you go to a fucking like like you like high five someone and they don't yeah. see you. And you're just like standing there. Dude, what would be great is if she would have just like bashed me. That would have been great. It's like you think you have a lot of money. I own three apartment buildings, you little bitch. You know, get back to work. Like, yeah. That would have made it less awkward. At least that would have been shit yeah. on me. Yeah. Instead, Dude, it was just quiet. I can't stand watching cringy stuff. Like I can't stand it. There's some. There's like this, this guttural reaction when something cringy is happening. Like I was watching a stream, uh, like a little while back. Yeah. And I can't even remember what it was. But never mind. This story isn't going anywhere because I don't remember. I started talking before I thought about what I was saying. Never mind. No, I. But, I, I know what you mean with like. Uh, you ever seen like Louis? That Louis C.K. TV show? I didn't. I never watched that show, but I know about it. That's the, the entire existence of that show is just, I can't watch it. I can't watch it. It is, that's what it is. It's just awkward. And like, I know people, people think that about The Office. I mean, I like The Office all right. I don't get the same reaction though. When it's like, when it feels more like genuine, like cringe, dude, I'm just like, like something in me wants to escape. I get that feeling every once in a while from the office. Whenever like Michael opens his fucking mouth and I'm like, yeah, it's something, it just depends on what it is. Yeah. I remember I was starting to get it from, there's like a scene where he thinks the concierge is like an escort at a hotel. (laughs) I was like, start, that was last night. It was like starting to build up in me, but then the scene didn't capitalize on that awkwardness. Like he, then it cuts and some other stuff happens and he meets her at a bar later and he does end up hooking up with her. But I was thinking he was just going to call her out as being like a, a prostitute concierge, like right then. And it was going to be like this super awkward moment. And, uh, it didn't happen. Thank God. (laughs) But, uh, you know what the worst one I've ever seen is this was right when the like quote unquote, like cringe compilations had first started to come out. Do you remember the Harlem shuffle? Yeah, there was a there's when people were doing Harlem Shuffle videos. Wait, was it the Harlem Shake or the Shuffle? Yeah, it Harlem the, Shake. Sorry, I was saying uh, there Harlem Shuffle, and that's an actual dance in the Harlem. Sh- yeah, I think that's an actual dance. Harlem Shake is that thing Filthy Frank started. I think, yeah, where yeah, Harlem Shake. Shake around. So people are doing the Harlem Shake videos. There's this kid that's in like high school, and he has his friend filming him, and he's he like he's like come on man we're gonna we're gonna do it <laughs> and the the cameraman like follows this kid who you can tell is a dork he's just a sniveling little melvin and he busts his way into like a full cafeteria oh God, dude and it's over like his shoulder perspective full cafeteria of people and nobody and, joins him and he goes everybody do the harlem shake and it's just Every it's just dead quiet and every head turns towards him and looks at oh him. Oh my god, dude, that's my nightmare. <laughs> and like that's when I cut the video every time. Like my asshole just I, yeah, fucking <laughs> get, it clinches so hard it, it has like the density of a dying star. Like just it just you turn inside out from yeah. cringing so hard. But if you keep watching, he just it's quiet and then he goes, Come on, everybody! Please everybody, please! <laughs> and there's one guy, like one jock in the back just goes no. <laughs> and, it, the and the guy keeps filming. Like the dude's like running through the cafeteria, like, come on, everybody. And like no one's doing it. And it just oh it hurts. God, I've only watched 30 seconds of it. Like I the thing goes on for like That's two so minutes good. and I can't I can't Here, Here's watch a question. It. Do you have 
like, okay, before you made this YouTube channel and you started getting successful and stuff, did you, did you have like stuff you would make when you were younger before you started this one that you just can't watch? I or have, even maybe like early stuff on this channel like that you just have unlisted. Dude, I, I go, th I went through and I purged hundreds of videos over the yeah. course of like seriously hundreds and people talk about it they're like why dude some of that stuff was good i'm like no no it wasn't no it wasn't dude. you have you have rose tinted glasses on you dumb motherfuckers because people I come don't... at me and they're like dude those skyrim videos you used to make were great i'm like you go fucking watch one of those right now and tell me it's as funny as a, a recent video yeah you dude, tell me um, when with i a first started face. when people started watching my shit like I go back now and I'm like, why the fuck did this get popular? Like, what did you see in me in the slightest? Yeah. I don't understand what's going on in people's heads, dude. It's like, like for me personally, like making this stuff, I'm just an idiot. Like, I'm just a moron. I don't know what I'm doing. But for someone to see it and be like, oh, this is pretty good, man. <laughs> like, what, dude, what are you doing? Like, what is your, what is your, like, comedy meter look like what do you think is funny on a general basis this is garbage well it's i have i realize that their comedy is such a like weird um subjective thing because i'll watch stuff that's supposedly quote unquote hilarious you know like have you ever watched yeah. like a kevin hart special or something yeah there's and you're like for stand-up comedians especially like some people will just be dying at a certain one and i'm like yeah or Ali Wong, I think her name is. And I'm like, ugh. Abby made me watch that. And I'm like, okay. I typically yeah. don't watch um, comedy stuff for that reason. Because, like, there, there's one thing I can't stand is, like, just comedy that isn't landing for me. And I'm just not into it. And it's just in a movie. And I'm just stuck there. Yeah. And then also movie trailers. Dude, I cringe so fucking hard at movie trailers. I can't. I can't watch them. It drives me crazy. Like when I'm when I go to see like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or whatever it is, and I'm at the theater and they're playing the trailers beforehand, and it's just like, like, boom, a hit and like this joke with no music, and then boom, like the music kicks back up. And I'm you're talking like, oh about the Cats God. trailer. That is, <laughs> that's what Catch, you're talking. Which about. one is that? The Cats. It's like, oh, Cats. Yeah, Cats. Did you yeah, see the dude. trailer for that? With I did. I did. Oh, my God. The, and, and, you know what? Everybody's bitching about the wrong shit on that. Everybody's bitching about how the cats look. Yeah. That, which I don't have a problem, problem with all. That. I have a problem like, with they have that dumb fat lady that's supposed to be like comedy late. And the they did exactly that. She, the music stops. She rolls like, off the thing. Yeah. Uh, and she falls and gets up. Oh, I can't. And dude, you know there's that. like 40-year-old moms that are drinking boxed wine in the theater going, ah! <laughs> Her hand Dude, hit a mouse like trap. One those, you sound like funny. one of those rubber chickens <laughs> that are like, ha, ha. You're, you're actually breaking my fucking headset or my <laughs> microphone or whatever the fuck I'm listening with. Oh my God. Like I, when you scream, I hear it crackling. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? They, uh, yeah, the, those editors, man. You know what's funny though is one of the best trailers I've seen recently is... The uh, Joker trailer. Did you see that trailer for the new Joker movie? No, I movie? haven't yet. With Joaquin haven't. Phoenix. Oh my god, it looks good, man. It looks so. That's what I liked good. about um the the lighthouse trailer that I was talking about earlier. It's like I like when trailers just show the atmosphere of the like story that's going to be told. You know what I mean? Like yeah, when it's just kind of atmospheric, it doesn't give away really anything, and it's not just trying to be like super like. Here's a joke. Here's a joke. Here's a highlight. Here's this. I don't yeah. know because I haven't seen that trailer. I don't know what it's like, but I feel like ninety nine percent of the trailers that I watch are just like I physically can't watch them because they they put in what they think are the best bits or like the the widest appeal. That's you know what exactly I mean? like, what uh, this Joker trailer is. Is it's it's the you are getting the vibe of what it is. And yeah, and I love that shit yeah, dude, so much. It's like if you thought the the dark Knight trilogy from Christopher Nolan was like, that's quote unquote, the, the most real it grounded in reality, superhero. Well, franchise. I don't know. Have you seen uh suicide squad? Suicide squad. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that, but I refuse to see it. Dude. It's bad. I saw that in theaters for some stupid oh reason. 
What's and, the worst movie you've ever seen in theaters? Um, the uh, there's that movie with Josh Hartnett in it, and it's about uh, the Black Dahlia murders. Um, <clears throat> I think Dahlia. I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember what it's called. I straight up walked out of the theater. It's the only movie I've ever walked out of the theater on. Really? Yeah, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. And I was young at the time. So my judge of movies might have been a lot worse, but I think looking back on it, it was probably pretty bad. Also, the uh, there was another movie called uh, The Good Shepherd, I think. That sounds like a Christian movie. Not good. It was not good. <laughs> you yeah, know, have you ever watched only... a movie and then and then uh, and then thought it was bad and then rewatched it later and you were like, oh, I was just in the wrong frame of mind. Yeah, that happens a lot for me where it's like I watched it when I was younger, but I I didn't know anything about film or anything. And I just didn't appreciate certain aspects that I fucking love now. Yeah. So that happens sometimes. But it's also the other way around where I'll there'll be some movie that I loved when I was younger and I'll watch it now. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is dude. Yeah, that's like, uh, I think Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. I hated the first time I watched it. Cause it just seemed like substanceless. Mm-hmm. And then I, cause it's, it's a slow moving movie. And then I watched it the second time. And I was like, that was a damn good movie. <laughs> I thought it was really, I haven't nice. seen that one. Like my grandpa would always put on like Westerns and shit. And I would see like the good, the bad, the ugly. And I would just be so bored. But then like now watching <laughs> shit like that, I'm like, damn, it's kind of badass. Like, you know what I mean? Just like I was a kid and just, yo, didn't... this old Western kind of hit a little bit different though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, <laughs> there's some old movies though that are like regarded as these classics, and I go to watch them, and I think they're just dumb as shit. Yeah, there, I, there's stuff like that too, where I'm just like, do you guys really enjoy this, or is it just like trying to be snobby or something? Yeah, I think uh, you ever seen Dirty Harry? Uh, I've seen parts of Dirty Harry. I think it's the most overrated shit of all time. <laughs> I think what what made it important was it was like the first movie. Of that kind, you know what I mean. But there's there's yeah. better movies than that now. That I've done that exact same thing. Or uh, you know what movie is is that I always thought was interesting was um you ever seen Once Upon a Time in America? No, no, that's that's it's a movie where you watch gangsters grow up as kids, like from the time that they're kids during uh. Um, like turn of the century in New York all the way through like prohibition and they become gangsters. And, uh, and so naturally as a viewer, you're like, Oh, it's a kid. I'm on his side. You know, a kid's a kid. You can't think of them negatively. Right. And then you see him turn into men and uh, just do vile things or something. Yeah. Like the, the main character, uh, Robert De Niro is like the main gangster and he ends up like raping this bitch in the back of a car. And like, at that point you're like, this guy's kind of a fucking scumbag. (laughs) Yeah, dude. (laughs) And, and you realize you're not really supposed to, I guess, sympathize with them. Like they're just assholes, but you like watched them. I get, it's like almost like as a parent, you know, you get that kind of perspective like oh it's my yeah. little kid and then they turn out to be like jeffrey dahmer and you're like jesus christ where'd i go wrong? <laughs> it's like it or like in your mind you want to be on the side of the main yeah protagonist or whatever that's like with um with taxi driver like there was some dude talking about in a discord i was in he was talking about how much he loved taxi driver because the main guy was just like this vigilante and how he loves vigilantes. And I'm like, did we watch? Like, what are you talking about? He seemed like a psychopath. To <laughs> yeah, me. What are you he's talking fucking about? insane. <laughs> yeah. What I never got was the, I never got why he wanted to assassinate that candidate. Like, was it just to lash out? I never got the, the. I would have to watch it again because it's been so long, but I don't know. I, I think he just wanted to take out. I don't remember important. the reason. Yeah, I think it was. it was like he just was crazy yeah. as fuck. You ever seen, uh, um, Finding Nemo. Mm, no, was that one an, an older, older film? I'm yeah, not that's familiar with. Around, yeah, it's regarded kind of like Citizen Kane, best movie ever. Might be a little before my time, I yeah. think. Well, if Finding Nemo is funny because it's two different movies depending on how old you are. Because like when you're watching as a kid, you know the kid, the kid like uh, 
if you remember the plot of dude i haven't seen that movie since i was a fucking kid okay well then here that you'll you'll relate to this perfectly or it'll be a good story so the uh at the beginning um the fucking mom and dad clownfish uh they have their eggs and their little sea anemone right and then some fucking fish attacks or something kills the mom and then eats most of the eggs Except for one, which is Nemo. And so he's it's like, mm, just this good, baby. <laughs> so he it's eats just, all them eggs. So it's just the dead clownfish left with the with the fucked up little egg, which turns out to be Nemo, who has like a fucked up fin, right? Yeah, I remember that. He's got that little fin. Yeah. And yeah, so, finding Nemo. And the dad's like super protective, right? And like as a kid, you watch that movie and you're like, dude, stop being such a bore, Marlin. Like, let the kid swim. Yeah. It's a, but then now you're older, you're thinking about it like I have a like kid now, so and I'm like, dude, that, little fucking kid. that guy lost his wife and is now a single dad, and he is just the, you are the one thing he cares about. Stay the fuck in line, Nemo, <laughs> yeah. you little shit. Like, just fucking listen to him. That's dude, all he Nemo, cares take about. That other fin off you. I you swear to God, behave. if I was Marlin in that movie, the dad, I would have traveled all the way over to Sydney. And when I found Nemo, I would have beat his ass for running away. I swear to God, that motherfucker like with, uh, dragged me across the entire ocean, getting chased after by sharks and shit. Had to hang out with Dora, that dumbass bitch with the Ellen DeGeneres voice. Can't remember anything. Yeah, Dor- Dory. Dory. Dude, how do I know was... more about this movie than you? Are you know. a massive Finding Nemo fan, <laughs> yeah. and, or or not? <laughs> People relate to like for SpongeBob how the kids are like ah SpongeBob he's crazy and weird and then like the adults are like goddamn he's annoying yeah but I'm on Squidward's side or whatever you know yeah. like they got you know how Twilight had Team Edward and Team you know Jacob and then SpongeBob is like Team SpongeBob or Team Squidward you know, you know I never understood so- about Twilight is when they uh, when they fuck isn't uh, um, Edward's cock ice cold. To what it, oh, I guess so, dude. What the fuck? Be like getting fucked was, with a popsicle. Like, how's that enjoyable? That sounds horrible. Yeah, dude, you get you like getting frozen to his little shaft. <laughs> dude, speaking of Twilight, that that's uh, Robert Pattinson. Have you seen his stuff that he's been doing lately? Like the more serious roles in movies and shit. No, no, I dude, haven't. I'm into it. I'm real into it. That that lighthouse movie I was talking about. He's in that, and oh, yeah? it's fucking, it's weird. Like. I, I like him as an actor now that I'm seeing, because you know, like forever ago in the Twilight, like I, I did never watch Twilight, but it's always like, oh yeah, Twilight sucks, Ugh. and I don't know why it sucked. I just remember everyone said it, and I was like, yeah, fuck Twilight, dude. Yeah, but I read the it's books. Cool. Did you really? On God, I read the books, dude. No, <laughs> you fucking didn't really. Yeah, I thought, I did. I, weren't they just like a, a fan fiction or something? Or am I thinking of like Fifty Shades? That's of Grey that's or Fifty Shades of Grey is a fanfic. Of Twilight. Now, Twilight was, was really? uh, d- reading those books makes you feel like a fucking genius because you just fly through them. They, <laughs> they're written for, they're like a teen novel series. You can just almost just sit there and browse it like you're reading an instruction manual. Just yeah. And finished them in no time. Abby was reading them. And so I was like, uh, you know, it would give us something to talk about. So I, I yeah, I read those fucking things. And um, they're not the best written things in the world, but the movies, I think what it was is they were just so poorly acted in, except for Robert Pattinson. He was, he was the only one that you could tell actually could act. Yeah, dude. I'm, I mean, I'm going to have to, I'm a little late, but I mean, I'm sure the fandom will welcome me yeah. with open arms. You if know, I were to yeah. jump, jump in. Yo, bro, I got some lightly used uh, paperbacks, mass market paperbacks. If you want to borrow the series. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Is yeah. there a manga version? Because I, I think I might relate more to a more graphic novel approach. I don't think so. Dude, but here's that, something. They never actually go into detail about the ice cock. So don't look. I know you're just wanting the graphic novel version so well, you can I see mean, the illustration. Now that you mention it, I am very curious about that. Because right? blood flows into the, the ween, as it were. And what happens? Oh, yeah. Like, he doesn't have any blood. Is it just always stiff? I don't, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Maybe he's maybe he's kind of smooth down there like a Ken doll. Yeah, interesting. No, no, they have sex. They they talk Do about they? it. Yeah, they have sex. No, that's a plot hole if I've ever seen one. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk to whoever fucking wrote those things. You can pick their immense brain. If I could pick your mind for a bit, <laughs> yeah. What did you mean when you said they had sex? Because. 
from my point of view, it seems like Edward <laughs> couldn't get a heart on. Oh wait, was his name Edward? Or was it Jacob? Which one was? It, it was Edward. Jacob was was Wolf Boy. Yeah, dude. Oh man, he's oh, so guttural the, and like yeah. kind of manly. With them big peck abs. He had big ass pecs. <laughs> wait, how old was he in that movie? Uh, I don't know. Bro, you want to start a ring? You know what I'm saying? You want to start some sort of <laughs> yeah. uh, where we watch older movies where the stars are young. Yeah, like uh, yeah, that's why I watched Taxi Driver because uh, what's her face? Um, mm. Oh wait, was she Jodie she? Foster? She was like 13 in that movie. I gotta I think go so. call some people. Uh. <laughs> I think she was like 13. You know, I, I think uh, there was something to do with. It was like their infatuation with her in that movie was the reason someone got shot or something. What? Have you seen Leon the Professional? Oh, yeah, with uh, Natalie <laughs> Portman. Yeah, yeah, and she was like an eight-year-old or some shit. Yeah, she was young as shit, smoking cigarettes in that movie. And didn't they have like a thing or something? I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie in forever, but I remember it being kind of weird. Yeah, it was weird. It was well, She kissed him. And then he Ooh, did not. Kiss. I gotta stop talking about this. I'm he, feeling weird. Yeah, he didn't kiss her back, dude, because Leon was a good guy. Yeah, he yeah. drank his fucking milk, and it, it, he had that milk breath. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's warm and hot and milky. Yeah, that milk <laughs> dude, breath, dude. But nah, she's he fucking wasn't straight fucking off with... the tip. <laughs> so she doesn't mind. He wasn't fucking with Natalie Portman, dude. He had his little plant, you know. I forgot about yeah. that, dude. Yeah, he's a fucking. <laughs> The, the, what sexuality is that where you just sort of end the plan? Have you seen those videos where they're like earth fuckers or whatever? They like yeah, they drill a hole in the ground and just fucking <laughs> fucking mount up <laughs> Mother Nature. I've seen the yeah, you're I saw about. one where this guy's just like railing a. Uh, it's he's like an old his tummy, an old fucked, fucked up stump, the... and he's like grinding on it. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? And you get that's how you get like dick rot or something. Yeah. You get termites in your shit. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. There's some there's some good ones out there. I forgot yeah, I saw all this about thing this. where it's like it's like just like a field, and there's like a couple boys just hanging out, like laying on their stomach, thrusting at the like a hole they've dug in the earth, and it's just so naturalistic and wholesome, and yeah, it's just you know coming right back to where you started, like Mother Nature. Man, <laughs> now the uh, have you ever seen those videos of the the Russian guy that like. He like takes his semen and injects it with a needle into an egg yolk. Yeah, and it makes a homunculi. Uh, yeah, it fucking, homunculus. It's like <laughs> yeah. this is a little tiny thing. It it like screeches at, at him or something. Yeah, and he goes suck a bleed. <laughs> he like smashes it. He smashes Dude, it. <laughs> he fucking cracks that bitch open. <laughs> what the fuck? Have you ever uh, you ever played uh, Escape from Tarkov? No, I haven't, but I uh, I kind of wanted to try it because it looks fun as fuck, but uh, Dude, I can't justify buying a game. Right? When they, uh, the, us YouTubers, man, I can't justify buying a game, he says. <laughs> yeah, get, dude. Like, free games all day. It's like, <laughs> paying money for that shit. Uh, that game has taught me Russian, and all I know is uh, uh, Cheeky Breaky, which is the classic, of course. What is that? What does that even mean? I don't really know. I think it's like... It's some like nursery rhyme, some Russian nursery rhyme. But uh, the other one is Opochki, which is just whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Opochki. Opochki. Whenever like the scavs, they'll have like their gun and they'll turn a corner and like whenever they aim at you on accident, like pointing a gun <laughs> at you, they'll go like Opochki, which is like That's whoops. I, from playing Modern Warfare 2, they would always be like Prosada Granado or whatever. Yeah. Like I know that. And then like from Resident Evil 4, they're like, Ah, matalo, matalo. I don't even know what that fucking means, but it's ingrained in my brain. Yeah. Why are they that always a made up the, language? I wonder how they feel about always being the bad guys and everything. I mean, I'm, I think I was probably talking about a few different uh, cultures just then, but yeah, I think the Granado is someone else. I don't think those are Russians in that game, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I don't know. They are Granado. It might be like Ukrainian or something. One of them satellite countries. Dude, I'm learning a lot about different languages as well because my girlfriend tries to get me to watch anime and I can't stand it. And um, they, I'm learning so many different... Like, basically, I make her mad because 
will be watching it and I just repeat everything that people say. And so I actually feel like I'm learning <laughs> Japanese yeah. from just repeating what they're saying. Yeah. They're like trying to make the noises and shit. And dude, I'm, I'm, I know how to say damn. It's like, hex, 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 or something like that. <laughs> or so, I know how to say it. It's uh, <laughs> it's this or something like that. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm getting so multicultured. I Pretty soon I'll be able to say sentences and form complete thoughts. <laughs> I should probably focus on my own language though, because I feel like I'm not I'm struggling on that front as well. Yeah. Yeah. English Maybe is, I should just take wild. things slower. Learn ever, English before I start expanding. You ever have like a clip of uh of something that you want to use for like a video, but you just don't have that instance where you're ever gonna use it? You know? Oh yeah. That's I have non stop. I have a clip from an anime where it's like <laughs> It, it's, it has to do with vampires, and I'm like, vampire games are so few and far between, I'm never going to be able to use this. Dude, you should play, um, well, I'll get you the name. You keep talking. One- it's, uh, the, the guy, the guy goes, hey man, why, it's so poorly dubbed. He's like, hey man, watch out for vampires, and the guy just like snaps his neck around and goes, you wouldn't know what a vampire is if it jumped up and bit you on the end of your fucking dick, so just <laughs> leave me alone. And then straight to a vampire cutting, <laughs> biting into your dick. Dude, Nosferatu, the Wrath of Malachi. Play that game, because it's funny as fuck. I mean, well, I guess it wouldn't really make a good video, because nobody knows what the fuck it is, but <laughs> it's, it's funny as hell, dude. It's so funny. You know, what's funny is at the beginning of this, I think we like, I wanted to segue into something and it was, uh, Oh wait, has the podcast started? I was actually going to ask, when do you want to start this thing? Oh yeah. Uh, probably here in a couple hours. I just want to <laughs> keep chatting for. Yeah. <laughs> you fucker. That's how I was going to end it. I was like, cause I noticed we never, <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to like, after like conversation naturally came to an end, I was just going to go. All right, man, you want to start this thing or what? <laughs> and then Dude, it was if, gonna cut. if that happened, I would just be devastated <laughs> because <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do. But you fucking just, just cut that segment out. I don't know how heavily you edit this shit. But no, I don't. Just don't cut worry that. about it. Well, I was going to say, though, at the beginning, what I was talking about, like, it was when we were talking about the, the uh, Nirvana, like, little clips you do and stuff. I have a couple of those where I've thought of them. And then I realized that, uh, you know, it's just, it's not worth putting the effort into one because either they use copyrighted music or it's like the concepts too weird to even do it as a full fledged video. Yeah. And I, hold on, I know I got it around here somewhere. Okay. I, <laughs> I got, I got one that I think is pretty funny and it's, um, I have you, have you ever used like Google Keep or like Notes or something like that? Apple Notes. Okay. Um, I don't know what Google Keep is, but is it just like a document? Where yeah, you it's just like a notes, keep like it? little notepad thing. Yeah, I use Google Doc- <clears throat> Docs a lot. I have a bunch of shit in there. Yeah, and I, I have like all these ideas written down on Google Keep. Dude, I can't stop staring at that lumpy nip. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to spam a little bit more in here so I stop staring at this thing. <laughs> Because well, you can, I feel like you can tell when I'm looking at it. Because this is me just talking normally, and then this is me when I'm just looking over here at this fucking titty. Here, hold on, I'll delete it from our conversation. I feel a lot better. There Thank you go, you. free of charge. Uh, I have this idea that I don't know if I could ever make it into anything, but it's um. Have you ever seen like those documentaries where uh. Like there was one where this guy goes up into like the Arctic Circle with him and like a bunch of cameras, and he just he was gone for like three years, right? Uh, making a documentary, and he comes back and he wins like an Academy Award for it. What the fuck? <laughs> and and I was thinking like you know it'd be hilarious if <laughs> if this guy like a hermit he goes out makes this badass documentary, comes back and he's totally cut off from society for a while, right? And uh, and so he doesn't know of all the things that have happened, and uh, and so he gets invited to the Academy Awards to win. And when he wins his Oscar, he goes up there at, at a, as an acceptance speech, and he's like, "Guys, I haven't uh, I've been cut off from society for a while, so and I, I'm not a Hollywood celebrity, so I don't know what you're supposed to say when accepting a reward." Or no, uh, an award. So I looked back on previous broadcasts to kind of get an idea. So the first person I'd like to thank is Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> he has no idea. He's like this rapist. <laughs> it's like publicly shunned. 
<laughs> and that's it. Like Dude. that would it would cut right when he says it. It would just be. I would like to think Harvey Weinstein. Boop. The end. Like, that's that's it. But like, how would I even make that? <laughs> I was talking to uh, to one of my friends uh, yesterday about how jealous I am of someone like Gus Johnson, where yeah. he he can just make whatever the fuck he wants, just because it's like. A little bite. Like, if he's got a concept, it's like, all right, I'll make a two-minute video. I'll make a 10-second video. I'll make a 30-second video. Like, whatever. Yeah. I'm so jealous of being able to do that because for me personally, it's like, whatever I pick to work on, that's going to be my thing for the next, like, three weeks. And it's just, like, I, I'm so jealous of being able to just be like, boom, 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 boom. Like, this is, this would be funny. This would be funny. And then if it's not funny, it's like, oh, who cares? Here's another one. Like, Yeah. You know, I man. feel that same way about... uh I think part of what it is, though, is that guy is using YouTube. You can tell. You can smell it. He's using it as a stepping stone to get on TV or in the movies. He's going to be somebody. Yeah, he's already done Comedy Central stuff, yeah. like, recently. Like, you can smell it. It's just it badass. Him. Like, I have two eras, though. Working. I have two eras. I have uh, uh, pre- California Gus, which is the funny Gus, and then I have post-California Gus. When, when he moved out in California, you could tell. You could fucking smell it on him. Really? Yeah. Because I, I, I haven't kept up with him too much. I've just seen, like, I guess, you know, the the top stuff that everyone yeah. sees. And uh, I don't know. I'd have to do a deep dive, you know, s- sift through the rubble and find what I can find. <laughs> you know what my favorite is, though, is you, you kind of do this. You're a little bit, uh, you know, you put all this work into your video, but then you're like thumbnails and titles. You just, like, shit them as, like, most carefully <laughs> as possible. Yeah. You ever seen, like, Critical... Yeah, yeah, he does that a lot. Where it's like his fucking he channel. He doesn't use a thumbnail, and then it's just a just it's just a dumping ground. It is a garbage pile of everything he's ever made. And at first, I looked at it and I was so pissed off. I was like, dude, you have such disregard for the. I guess like I, I like I came at it with such a snobby, douchey attitude. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just total disregard. He's just throwing it up there, and he uses that shitty camera. It's like this webcam. And it's shitty everything. Everything's shitty about it. And then I realized that like he garners so many views because it is a hundred percent about him. Like it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. The quality doesn't matter. It is just him. And that's where the quality is. And it cracks me up. He see, doesn't use thumbnails. Doesn't use tags. Doesn't use uh, title. His titles are just like he's fuck it, whatever. Like catch trailer review. <laughs> like <laughs> I appreciate you mentioning my. Uh, my disregard for thumbnails and titles because uh, I I actually try. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. I'm just I'm just days. bad at it. I'm just so bad. It's been like, days editing your <laughs> thumbnail. Yeah. No, I mean as far as thumbnails, that I'm, I genuinely am just bad at it. Like I, I'm so bad. But uh, as far as titles, like I put a lot of thought into that, but I just don't capitalize it for whatever fucking OCD weird ass reason. Yeah. Like I don't know why, but I just don't. And. Uh, it's just it's something I did once and then I just can't stop doing it and I have no idea why. Dude, you know about OCD like people who actually got it like you know the real shit? Yeah. I had that when I was a kid like bad. Yeah. To where it was like if I was it was everything like if I would stand up from taking a shit and it, it didn't feel right so you I would have, have to take standing three. up. <laughs> no, not to, no, I wouldn't just pump out logs all day. I mean, I, it was like... I you just, have to do it in sequence, you know? It's like, I gotta take three shits. No, I but it was like... I three shits before I can get up. I would get, like, ideas in my head, and I wouldn't be able to... It was like this weird foreboding feeling that I couldn't shake until it felt just right. Like, if I would open a door, I would just have to keep standing there and opening the door until it felt right. Yeah. Weird shit like that. And so there's... um. You know how, like, you know, when you're young and you start getting that sexual urge and you have those, those like, weird urges, you know, you start jerking off and touching yourself or whatever. Well, um, for whatever reason, <laughs> this was still at the time I had OCD pretty bad, and I had this idea in my head that I couldn't shake, and it was um, to touch my dick to the front of a one of those uh, heaters, you know, the standing metal heaters with the bars on the front? Oh, why? Dude. I have no idea, While it was but I on, did it. Or I still have a scar today. Oh, I'm God. not fucking kidding you, dude. It was like it's just like weird things would get in your head, and I couldn't shake the feeling. It was uh. so bizarre. Like everything, every like my entire life revolved around it. Like I would, I would blink 
and it would feel weird and I would just have to keep doing that one blink. It was like ticks. Everything but it was ticks. And I still have like it's mostly gone, but like there's still some weird shit that I do. Like like sometimes I'll sniff my nose and I just can't stop sniffing my nose. And I feel like I'm a moron because I'll be in public like <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like I'm hunting dog. down a fucking criminal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like sniffing around. Dude, Dude you know what? Fucking- I, this ruins me every time, but whenever I pick up like a, a glass or um, a plate or something out of the cupboard, like I can see it's clean, but I sniff it every time. And like the inside of a glass does smell like something. And sometimes it just makes yeah. me not thirsty anymore. I'll take it and just, and like, <laughs> it's just the dumbest thing. Dude, I, Cause I can't it, not do it. I do that too, but I think it's mostly because uh, I'm like the, uh, I'm like the house boy. Cause Alexa has a job, you know? And I stay at home and edit and fucking film stupid shit. Mm -hmm. So I do dishes and other, you know, boring shit. And, uh, dude, I I don't smell because it's like a habit. I smell because you got to be kind of careful because I could have easily missed something washing these cups. (laughs) Like, I'll I'll pull one out and it'll smell like milk a little bit. And I'm like, oh, damn. (laughs) I guess, like, how long have I been drinking out of glasses that have been tainted with something? I don't know. You know, uh, uh, Abby tried doing that shit to me. She's like, you work from home. The house should be clean by the time I get home. I'm like, I'm not a house <laughs> husband. Like, I'm not just sitting here fucking whacking off looking at the wall until you get home. I'm doing shit. I'm doing yeah, yeah. shit. It's, no, the house is not going to be fucking clean. She's like, I would like, like, you know, the house picked up. I'm like, dude, when you get, when you walk through that fucking door is when I clock out. I'll clean the kitchen then. Yeah. I'm not cleaning it while you're working. Fuck yeah, because you got shit to do. Yeah, I got dude, shit to do. do I make more than she does. Fuck off. She should come home and clean the fucking kitchen. You know what's funny? Is she tried one time we got into a fight and she was like, um, uh, uh I came to bed, right? And she was already in bed. And she tried rolling over and looking at me and going, Go sleep on the couch, which has never happened in our like because we don't get in fights that often. I, you know, I'm a fucking angel. I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> And you're she, probably just a pushover, dude. Like anything starts going wrong, you're like, "Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry." Yeah, that's what it is. Well, she she cocked her head over at me and was like, "Go sleep on the couch. I don't want to sleep with you." And I I'm, I looked at her. I was like, "I just got in bed." I was like, "Bitch, I fucking pay the mortgage and th- I bought the bed too. Fuck off. I'll sleep wherever the fuck I want." In this dude, house. there was a lot of tension in that bedroom. <laughs> yeah, I bet you was. were like, you were hot. I bet you were letting sleep in the covers in the oh, same bed. I you know what? I I had a stern voice. As I as I said it, and then I laid down in bed, and I I said my last wishes to myself, thinking that I might not wake up in the morning. <laughs> yes, <you're... laughs> I might wake up with like a knife in my chest, like oh, it's <laughs> the last thing I see. <laughs> you just see her over you with a fucking <laughs> butter knife, dude. Because I we don't get in fights either, my girlfriend and I. But like the few times it's happened, I'm just like, like I don't know what to fucking do. I'm like, oh my god, like. You know, I, I know that feel. Normally? Yeah, it's like uh, as soon as like the argument starts, yeah, your mind kind of goes into like a like a, it fades on the edges, and then you just start swinging. You know, I I know that <laughs> yeah. feel. Like I haven't argued with somebody in like two years. I don't know what to fucking do. <laughs> well, especially when you're with someone that long. Uh, what's that that saying? Familiarity breeds contempt. You know, because you know. At first, when you first start dating, you're like, oh, it's cute the way she eats food. And then after like 10 years, you're like, will you just fucking chew it normally? You <laughs> yeah. fucking weirdo. And <laughs> I get that. I, I get that. I, I don't have shit like that yet. And I hope I don't. But I mean, hey, we'll see how it goes in a few more years. I think Dude, I might be getting pissed off about everything. <laughs> you seem more laid back than me. I, I It's weird. I, I got... I had like a weird moment where in my early 20s, I got really laid back. And now I'm like, I think it's because I had a kid. Like everything just fucking makes me snap a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I just get on edge about stuff. Dude, you're the Marlin. You got to fucking, you got to protect that little baby Nemo. Right. And then then when he starts going to touch the butt, you're like, (laughs) dude, you're on edge all the time. You got to be because he could go touch that butt at any moment. No, I I think what it is like, man, there's tension between me and Abby because of our parenting differences you know oh did you guys like grow up different so it's like you have different ideas of what it should be like i want it i want it to be as relaxing as possible which it can't be with a kid 
So what I do is like I have this baby gate that closes off the kitchen, but it's low just enough. Just throw to- the kid in the fucking hallway. Just no, leave no it's out like there the living the room. Gate. Like I close all the bedroom doors, and then I close. I have the baby gate, and then the living room is like the safe area. I can sit there. You can watch TV. You can look at your phone. You can pick up the house, whatever. She's in that area. It's a pretty big area, but she can walk around, pick up her toys, do whatever she wants, and she can't die in there. There's not, like, bleach she can drink, right? So it's a very hands-off parenting technique. She can do her own thing, learn how to balance all that crap. Abby, like, (laughs) she'll walk out the house and, like, leave the door cracked, and, like, all of a sudden, the baby's, like, crawling out into the yard. It's I'm on like, the what? freeway. Yeah. <laughs> the <big laughs> car is honking. They're like, sir, is this your baby that yeah. was just in the road? Or she'll, like, leave the bedroom doors open and stuff. So, like, the baby is all of a sudden, like, hovering around the toilet. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, fuck. <laughs> She's like, well, why don't you watch her? I'm like, I ain't. Like, I don't want to have to sit there and just stare at her and make sure. She, like, just if you just fucking make yeah. sure you close shit, you don't have to worry about it. I feel like that's how I would be. I would just kind of want to be like, I would take after my dad, you know, and just not be around, you know, (laughs) just fucking leave the kid to fend for itself, you know, throw him in the yard. Your parents get divorced when you were young? Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, mine did too, man. All the cool kids, you know. did. Was it it a a traumatic thing for you or was it a beneficial thing for you? Mm, I feel like... I feel like it hasn't been traumatic yet. Maybe here in a few years when I'm having a crisis or something, I'll be like... You know, I'll phone up my dad and say, "Where? Hey, what's up? Like, why? What? Why did you do this thing?" But as of right now, you know, oh, was he like absent from your life, or where did you have like separate parents kind of thing? Uh it was like absent for like years at a time, and then it'd be like, "Hey, come, let's go spend a couple weeks doing oh, something." That thing, and then it would be like, "Yeah," I don't, and I don't you know, know, this guy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't like that. Like, it, it wasn't like I'm like I don't know who the fuck this guy is. It's like I thought my dad was cool and all that, but it's just sort of coming to terms. Like, yeah, he's a cool guy, but he's not a cool dad, dad. so much, yeah. you know? Yeah, like because uh, it's like I like my dad, but and I don't have any hatred or anything towards him. But it's like, hey, I'm just kind of doing my thing here, you know? I, uh, what was cool about mine was my parents divorced and then they were fighting for my affection. So I had like really bomb <laughs> yeah. Christmas presents for like years. I think I heard you talk about that before yeah. where it's like, <laughs> like they were like just had double the it. shit. Yeah. They, they were like, yeah, I love them more. You can tell cause I got them this remote control car. And you're, you're like, Oh my God, this is the best. Yeah. I was you're like, dude, you guys should garbage. each get married again. And then divorce. <laughs> divorce and you'll have even more. You're like getting <laughs> shit from stepmoms and stepdads yeah. from all over the fucking. Yeah. You know, I, 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 uh, I didn't have a problem with it really. I think it messed up my brother though. My brother started like acting out cause he was like, I'm the man of the house now. I ain't got to listen to you mom. But I was, you know, like, the, the, the fuck most up. fucked You're up thing was twelve. <laughs> was I was uh, I was introverted as hell, and it took my mom a couple years to realize that when she was, uh, when I was in trouble and she would send me to my room, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and then, that's funny. And then she realized she was like, "Oh shit, he likes getting sent to his room." So then all of a sudden, I had to go like go my, play with your friends. <laughs> my punishment was like go outside and mow the grass or something. Like it was always chores Dude. after that. And I was like, Bleh. yeah, that sucked." Dude, yeah. I my grandpa would make me do chores all the time because, like, you know, like we were talking about parents being separated, so my mom would have to go work, and we'd be at my grandpa's house. Yeah. Dude, he, we would be we would be picking up trash all day, fucking long. Like, you know when you know when you're mowing and you hit a fucking plate and it explodes like yeah. a paper plate and it'll turn into like a million pieces. For whatever reason, his yard looked like confetti like <laughs> all the time, <laughs> and so it would just be like. Oh, today we're picking up trash, and we just pick up trash all day in the fucking yard. And then, oh my god, dude, I'm so glad that I don't have to do shit like that anymore. It would be like hauling branches to the burn pile. Ugh, like thinking about thinking about going and hauling a branch makes me sick. Oh man, my my grandfather was a uh, do everything the fucking hard way kind of person, and he, I, I used to get home. This would piss me off. I would get home off the bus from like middle school or elementary school. And I would walk home and I would hate to see his car in the driveway. Cause I knew he had some fuckery that he wanted me to do. And it, it yeah. would, he was the kind of person that was like, Oh shit, it's Friday, which means we have uh, this afternoon, Saturday and Sunday to get whatever we're doing done. 
And like I remember we had uh, our house had a uh, it was like a ranch style home on the left side. It had a carport and he had this great idea. One time he was like, let's close in that carport and turn it into an extra <laughs> living room. What the fuck? And it was like a couple steps down into the carport. Right. And so like, I, I, it was Friday, dude, it was Friday. And I was, com- I was walking home down the road and I was like, yeah, it's Friday. It's Friday. And I was so stoked. And I turned the corner into my front yard and there's a giant pile of dirt two wheelbarrows with shovels in them sitting in the front yard and he was sitting there he this is what he would do whenever labor started he would sit there in a lawn chair and just direct yeah, you <laughs> that's exactly how my grandpa was <laughs> and dude. it didn't matter if it was the middle of fucking august at two o'clock in the afternoon boiling hot he would always be drinking black coffee he was like I don't oh my know. God. and he would sit there with his black coffee with us like a sun hat like indiana Jan- jones hat on indiana jans indiana jans <laughs> That's the lesbian version coming out soon. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> and I would sit there and fill up that fucking carport and we made the foundation and everything filled it up and then uh turned that place into a fucking living room and it sucked. It sucked. Like he this motherfucker, he was the only person I've ever seen that he saw this house that was about to get demolished and he was like, That's a pretty good looking house. And the people were like, Hey, well, uh um, I forget what he said. They're like, oh, it's getting demolished next week. And he said, if I if I can get it removed, can I have it? And they were like, what do you mean removed? <laughs> and he was like, I'll move it. And they're like, it, it's this big double story plantation. Like imagine the house from like, uh, you know, the one Don Left Johnson had from uh, uh, <laughs> Django Unchained. The guy that wears yeah, the whole yeah. white suit. Like it was a house like that, like a plantation style home. It's and like the, that fucking Left 4 Dead ending level where yeah. he's just in this massive plantation house. And he fucking got this thing. I don't know, like, what kind of psychopath does this, but he somehow got it, like, up onto I-beams, and he paid to have all the power lines taken down on the road so they could drive this fucking house to a different location, and he put it on a lot, and it looks great there. You would never suspect that this thing had been on the back of, like, three 18-wheelers cut into pieces. <laughs> Dude, that's what I always think when I'm driving down the road and I see someone fucking hauling a house. I'm like, what are you yeah. doing, dude? Stop it. Well, those You're like all, slowing me down. Those are all like mobile homes designed for that. This was a home built in like 1890 <laughs> that he yeah. cut like into sections and carried off. And like, but I've never seen someone like I would a million times over just burn that house down take a picture of it and go all right let's build one that looks exactly like that on yeah, this lot why would like, you it seems like so <laughs> so like much productive yeah. you had to try and fucking haul this thing like it seems like it would be so much more money time and effort than just yeah. building a house on the lot that you have <laughs> that's so bizarre i don't know man he was a weird guy but he did it and it was yeah i i know exactly what you mean though being like your uh the bitch slave boys to the family and my grandpa he would he w- i would do everything like it's not even that like we'd go to the drive through and he would make me order like i would have to fucking like unbuckle and stand Talk up for and me lean squire over and, yeah no i'm not even fucking kidding dude it was like that everywhere like like oh, he, he would be like i would be standing up you know in the back seat like leaning forward over him and uh i'd be like a number one with cheese and they're like mustard and mayonnaise and i'm like mustard and mayonnaise and he's like um um mustard and i would go mustard with a large fry a side of onion rings like he would always order like eight things and uh because he wouldn't uh he wouldn't fucking prepare meals he would just order food for the next week like from drive throughs so i'm up there fucking ordering his week's food and uh whisper Dude, he would, I'm telling you. And mustard. <laughs> and so and so they're like, anything else with that? And then, you know, by that time he had made up his mind that he wanted a couple more things and he's like, onion rings. And I would, you know, onion ring, an order of onion rings, large. And but okay, so apply that to everything. So it would be like we we'd have to go to the hardware store and he'd send little eight year old me, he'd be like, I need two uh I need two two things two eye beams that are two two by four or whatever and give me some bolts like a like 30 bolts that are blah 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 and i'd have to go in there with this little <laughs> shitty list like every aspect of everything was just me doing it for him it was weird and see that's what i aspire to be when i if i eventually have a kid yeah dude, that kid's 
it's going to know so much uh, just from experience. I'm going to be like, you know, tell it to mow the lawn, tell it to fucking anything I can think of. I'll push it onto the kid probably. The, uh, uh, my uncle used to always call me and my brother rent a kids. <laughs> <laughs> you can't can I borrow the kids and you can't yeah. just come over and it build was a pool weird how all of a sudden he wanted he was like really friendly to us once we were old enough to hold a shovel he was like hey oh hey buddy it's yeah, your dude, old uncle yeah. what's up you want to come over to my house and fucking dig a ditch for a little bit <laughs> yeah he's super friendly my my grandpa was so friendly to his kids which um you know seems expected but I didn't like going over that much. So he'd be yeah. like, all right, we're going to, to Uncle Dingo's house or whatever today. Like, that's not a real uncle. But, you know, I'm the names and identities of those involved have been changed for their yeah. sake. Anyway, so we'd go over and spend like eight hours at their house just doing nothing. And I'm like, I'm like a 10 year old wanting to go play fucking Halo 2 or something. Yeah. And it was just pissing me off. And that was just like every day it'd be like, I'd get home from school and be like, oh, man, I cannot wait. I'm gonna launch Oblivion. I'm gonna I'm gonna finally get my sneak skill up. It's gonna be epic. And then he'd be like, "All right, we're going to Aunt Aunt So and So's house, and uh, we're gonna you know do whatever." And I just spend all day. Over to, there. We need to go to McDonald's. You need to order me. <laughs> Papa's getting hungry. <laughs> I want to make a flurry. <laughs> M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! I'm trying to think of anything else that <laughs> he would do. That's just Gramps, funny. They said the McFlurry machine's broken. You and he's like, "Piece of shit, this ain't gonna work." <laughs> he's like giving me, feeding me lines to gripe him out. <laughs> I'll tell him I'll have your job if you don't. <laughs> I'm just a little eight-year-old talking shit. <laughs> yeah, Doing corporate threats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh god! Uh, you know, I've always wanted to own a franchise, like a, a restaurant franchise. Not like all of them. I'm saying, like, I've always wanted to open up like a Chick Fil A or something because I figured though they have to make so much money. They always have people yeah. lining up outside them. Like, there's no way that's not a profitable business. And it, dude, Chick Fil A is—they have like four weird. things on the menu. There's no—they can't be expensive to stock. I know, it's like dude, chicken dude. sandwich or chicken nuggies or tendies. Chick Fil A actually is insane. Like at any point in the day, I'll pass by and it's full. And yeah. here's what pisses me off: there's one main road that goes like in a, like the road I live on. There's one main road beside it, right? That's how you get everywhere because it just goes the length of the entire city. Yeah. And um, do we live in the like, same town? Like, Dude, listen, you might relate to this because there's it's like three lanes, right? And then on the right hand side, there will be lots like there's the mall and then there's like fucking this lot has like, you know, a makeup store and, and like different restaurants and stuff like that. People will fucking it drives me insane. They will. The line will be backed up from Chick-fil-A out of the lot to where they are parked alongside traffic on this side of the fucking road. Stopped waiting in line at Chick-fil-A. And I'm like. Dude, you, you live in Tallahassee. There's no way you dude, don't. I'm, I'm, I go fucking crazy. I'll just be honking behind these fucking people. And they're like, hey, what? I'm waiting for Chick-fil-A. I'm in line here. I'm like, like, dude, it, I'm getting so mad thinking about it. Like, what what rational person sees that, that Chick-fil-A, like, the entrance to the lot that Chick-fil-A is in is full? And they're like, ah, I'll just wait in the fucking road. <laughs> yeah, dude, the like, how hard is it to pass to the next little entrance? To The lot is massive with, like, six different entrances how hard is it to just go into the next one i talked about fucking... this in the previous podcast dude did you really i thought there our chick-fil-a in town is getting a three lane drive through dude ours is already two lane they, 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 need they to did expand. it two lane and people were like dude that is the greatest thing it's still backed up Do into you have the capital fucking guys outside or like taking orders yeah they're out what there the with their fuck fucking is, iPads. What are Chick Fil A doing, dude? Yeah. Like, what is going on? They have so much business. Have you ever that, been that, in that, that line when they come up to the window with the iPad? And yeah, and they're just like instant. They're like, they're like, what do you want? And you're like, this, and this, and they're like, in. all right. And then you realize you look at the time and you're like, Jesus Christ, it's still like another ten minutes till I get to the window, and I already ordered. I can't yeah. leave now. I've already paid. So then you're stuck in the line, dude. Do you want to hear a fucking life hack? This this changes the way I order Chick Fil A. All right. On the app. You fucking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You order the app and they have a part spot where you can sit and wait. So I just order the app and I go and I sit and wait. And then when they see me pull up, they just bring it out. 
It's yeah. like pe- fucking dickheads will be in line for 45 minutes <laughs> to get their stupid fucking chicken burgers or whatever the hell. And I just pull up and I'm there for less than 30 seconds. I it's get my chicken food and I sandwich, leave. bro. What do you get when you go there? Uh, I get the spicy chicken sandwich. Okay, that's a good choice. I was about to say, I, I was... If Why do you, you say it's a good choice? Like, there's fucking only three things. You can get the <laughs> spicy, the normal, or you can get the little nugget ball. I, I don't like the nuggies. They're really? they're like yeah they're like sweet or something. They're, the chicken's different on the sandwich than it is on the nuggies. I swear. Dude, I like the spicy. The spicy C is what we call it here. Do all my boys go and get the spicy C? <laughs> Dude, I honestly I could get any of the sandwiches that they have. They're they're pretty good. Even the grilled ones pretty good. I never had that. Dude, I'm a man of, yeah. uh, <laughs> of no pussy. ritual. Dude, yeah. I, I, if. I haven't, you know what boba tea is where it's like, it's got those little bobo balls or whatever the fuck. It's like a Thai drink where it's just different milk teas or something. No, no. Okay. Anyway, we always, we've been going to this fucking Thai tea place for like ever, forever. And the very first time I went out, I, I had no idea what any of this shit was. It's like different milk teas and different smoothies and shit. And I was like, I'll get, I'll get this thing, whatever it is. I tried it. And it's my favorite thing on the menu, and I haven't tried anything else. Like, I've, we've been going to this place for, like, six years or more. And I don't even know what a single other thing tastes like. Because I just get something, and I'm like, oh, this is good. And then I just don't ever change it. And yeah, I that, feel like I do that like with everything. It's like going to Italian places. Like, if you – I chicken parm or uh, uh, Alfredo. You can't go wrong. Yeah, dude, that's what, that's what I'll do for them. I'll just get chicken Alfredo. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never tried a fucking, I don't know what a ravioli is, dude. <laughs> just give me the fucking I, chicken Alfredo that I always. I want to see a restaurant fuck up Alfredo or chicken parm. I, I I challenge a restaurant to fuck it up. There is no way you can mess dude, up. You can go to Walmart and buy one of the frozen chicken <laughs> Alfredo things and it tastes perfect. Yeah, like, it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. There's just no way to screw it up. There isn't. And it. Yeah, every time I'll go to an Italian place, I'll order that. Or, like, if you go to a Mexican place, like a chimichanga with, like, the cheese sauce on it. Yeah. Uh, Dude, one thing that cracks me up is, you know, when that trend was going on with the, um, like, the rate, the fast food places, and, like, this is A tier, this is S tier, and all that. (laughs) It cracks me the first. I thought you said, like, rape the fast food places. (laughs) I was like, Jesus Christ. And then you started going through the ratings. I was like, okay, we're on the same page. (laughs) Like that miss a but, trend, Jesus, <laughs> dude. That's a whole other controversy. Like, there's gonna be YouTubers coming out that have done some crazy shit. They're like, "Oh, I misunderstood." <laughs> I was doing it for the meme, dude. That's one uh, I can talk about. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway. So what I was talking about the fast food shit. People are so visceral in their reactions. They're like, "Yeah, this fast food place is garbage. How how is that rated A?" And that's something that's so bizarre to me because it's all garbage, dude. Like, I don't know how you, I don't know how somebody is like, this one's better than this one. This one's garbage, dude. It's like, I feel like what happened is you had a bad experience at Chipotle and, and th- you just never ate there again. And you're just pissed off at Chipotle for no reason. You it's know like, what I did? I think I, I did mine and it like pissed off a lot of people because mine was, uh, it was basically the places I ate at. And then at the very bottom was just places, places you I never did, tried. I never <laughs> like Arby's and Hardee's and all that shit was at the bottom. But at the top yeah. was Chick Fil A S tier, and then A tier was like uh, uh, like In and Out Burger, Shake Shack, Water Burger, like the like the <laughs> yeah. the good ones. And that's yeah. I feel like that's what everybody does. It's just yeah. like you don't eat at all these places. You just you had a McRib once, and you were like, eh. yeah. and then you just fucking you. Dude, that's F tier. You know what my grandma does is she'll go and like I'll I'll like drive by McDonald's on my way to uh, see her and she doesn't get out much so I was like hey uh, you know can I get you anything from McDonald's I know you like McDonald's and she's like yeah get me a uh, uh, a fish fillet <laughs> so I had to buy her a fish fillet who the fuck orders that a fillet yeah, of fish that's what it's called fillet <laughs> of fish and I, that thing just stunk up my fucking car I was like dude. There's no, I, I almost felt like buying her something else. Just saying, oh, they were out of it. <laughs> they were out of your gross. <laughs> She's probably so sandwich. old she wouldn't even realize. She'd just eat it up and be like, <laughs> oh, this fish was delectable today. And it's just like a chicken sandwich. Have you ever seen that old people that don't know what they're eating? It's great. Uh, My grandpa was in, uh, <laughs> no. was in the hospital and he was eating uh, 
they they brought him. I think he thought it was like a, a turkey platter, like with a bunch of turkey. But what it was is it was like a platter of food, and then it had a piece He's of bread. He's just eating his fingers or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was a piece of bread with like turkey and then another piece of bread and he was cutting it with a fork and knife he's like wow do you guys want some of this this is a lot of turkey a lot of he food. Thought was, like, he's just eating bread he was like eating <laughs> a bread. pile of turkey yeah he thought he was eating a pile of turkey what and it was like fuck? a turkey sandwich I'm like how did you not know that you were eating bread like <laughs> it's like after a certain age your tongue just stops Gives working up. or something yeah. dude that's weird like and hospital hospital food is its own thing because it just is just really strange uh and like have you ever been in the hospital and just eaten the weird shit that they have our our hospital here it's tmh that's what it's called and tmh is every time i've gone there it's been a different experience because they repeatedly fire the head chef people or company or whatever and then hire a different one and so like you'll go in there and sometimes it'll be like you're eating at ikea where it's like you can tell it's mass produced food, but it's good. And then sometimes you go in there and it's like diarrhea on a plate, like it's prison food. And it just doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, that's really weird because I feel like people are like, oh man, I just had my fucking left arm amputated. This sucks. And then they eat cardboard. It's like, I feel like there should be some sort of. I feel like that should be like a highlight of being in a hospital. It's like, at least I get a good meal. Yeah. But it's like, I'm eating dog food. <laughs> it just is disgusting. Well, sometimes, yeah, like, uh, I think it was the time af- I, my mom was in, in there for like septic shock or something. She had like some insane abscess thing going on where she had like bacteria in her blood. And, uh, and it was like the most traumatic thing because uh, you, you were a medical guy, right? Can I say that? Is that like a... Uh, we prefer the term medical person. Well, I was I, I didn't know if it, I didn't know if it was like a leak of your of your personal information. I don't know what how much you want people to know on YouTube, but no, it's fine. Uh, uh, as a medical person, you know that that's dangerous <laughs> shit, right? Like a flip of yeah. a coin, you could die from septic shock. So, um, uh, but that time I was blown away. They had like some bomb ass chicken sandwiches that were better than Chick Fil A's. Like they had some <laughs> good mom. shit. I was mom, like, Mom, like I know you're about nap. to die, but I'm about to hit up that cafeteria again, dog. Like <laughs> they had desserts and shit going on, and it was bomb. And then I came back for uh, uh, my wife's pregnancy, and they had some shit in there, and I had to live in the fucking hospital for three days. I was like, this place fucking sucks. Like it was only like a year difference. It's horrible. Yeah, the when I was doing the medical stuff, the, like the the hospital I was at, it was like they had this massive cafeteria with like. Uh, like, oh, you want pizza? We got the pizza station. Or you want, like, these weird-ass <laughs> salads? We got the salad station. Or there's, like, there was, like, a Subway-type station. Like, each, there was, like, multiple little restaurants in the cafeteria area. Yeah. And it was pretty pretty good, but I don't know what the fuck it was, because then I would go in somebody's room to, like, give them insulin or something. And they'd be eating this disgusting-looking shit. And I feel like, I feel like some, maybe it was just the way it was presented that looked nasty, but I feel like we weren't eating the same shit. You know what I mean? No, they, they you're not. They have like the what goes up to the rooms and it has to fit certain nutritional macros or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, then dude, you they have got like, like MREs. Yeah. Because I remember when my grandfather was in the um, the heart uh, ward or whatever for like bad heart people. I forget what that's called. And uh, they would bring him shit that was like they would give him steamed vegetables with no salt. And he would just be sitting there like, what? <laughs> like eating it he's like this he's is like fucking sobbing horrible. Eating yeah. <laughs> fucking food. he's like can you give me some salt and they're like no you can have mrs dash <laughs> which is like ghetto yeah. salt yeah. he's like crying and, and you're like oh pat I, I know this hard thing is gonna work out and he's he's like no this fucking food is disgusting <laughs> he's eating garbage he's just giving up he, he's like i don't care anymore just <laughs> pull the plug <laughs> dude that guy you know, people always talk about like um, socialized health care, right? And and how whether or not we should have socialized health care. And part of me thinks, you know, for the greater good, that's not a bad idea. But then the other part of me thinks like in a, a world in a country with socialized health care, my grandfather would have died decades ago. That dude in 1991, I was born. And in 19, 
uh, 92, he had a massive heart attack and stroke. And only because he had money was he able to get basically people to do way too much work on him. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure those it's doctors like, dude, were like putting off young kids with like heart problems just to fix this old fucking guy up. But he ended up getting like a defibrillator pacemaker thing. And that dude lived until I think 2015. Like he, like my whole developing childhood life. Like that was like my father figure. And I, I remember you would have conversations with him and he would have a heart attack while you're talking to him. What and, the it, fuck? and his defibrillator, <laughs> you'd be, I'm serious, dude. He had like dozens, dozens over the course of me growing up. And you'd be talking to him and he would just sit there and go, ah, ah, and like grab oh his God. chest and his pacemaker would be going off. And then he would sit there and like start sweating. And he'd be like, oh, sorry about that. I just got hit a little bit. Oh my God, dude. He's like part grandpa, part machine. He's <laughs> yeah, like, he was like, he's like part. the million dollar man or whatever. And what he was like, fuck? and he was like, all right, what were we talking about? <laughs> like it would just, he would constantly be getting shocked to back to life. That's so weird. It was dude. so weird. And uh, you can like see your grandpa die multiple times while he's telling yeah. you the story. <laughs> and he would just, I, one time he was talking to my, uh, my father-in-law and he was just, he got hit like three or four times and he was on, he was on a, a swing on the front porch. And so the swing was jostling all over the place while oh he was getting, God. while he was getting lit up while he was talking to him. Yeah, everyone's like, all right, uh, stand back from Pat Pat so you don't electrocute yourself. He's yeah. getting shocked. To- <laughs> and they say that they say that it, it doesn't um, like in the movies, how their like body jolts around like that shouldn't happen. And uh, uh, from the electrical current, and I don't think it was the electrical current. I think it just hurt like the Dickens, him getting shot. So like, he would just, his whole body would like spasm like he was getting shot by a gun. He was like, ah! ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, when I was doing that hospital shit, there was, it was weird because you see like a lot of strange stuff. Like there was some lady who was like addicted. She was getting addicted to her fucking pain pills. And like, you know, you'd go in and it, she'd be like, She's like, oh man, my my back's really hurting. Could I get could I get my next dose or whatever? And you know, you'd look and you'd be like, man, you just had your dose like you know thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. And you know, she's trying to take advantage of like a new person being in the room so she can latch on and be like, oh man, I would I really need those pain pills so bad. And I feel like I don't know. I feel like hospitals a weird place to be, dude. Have you ever had the opposite where like you someone's forgotten to give someone pills and you feel really bad? Uh. I don't, I haven't had that happen, no. I, my mom had a back surgery where she had a, a, two of her vertebrae fused. And apparently, like, back surgery is the most painful thing you can go through. Like, it is just agonizing. And uh, and she she got it fused, and she was in her room, and they, like, didn't give her... Like, she had the, the anesthetic from the surgery, but then they didn't time it right so that she had painkillers to transition to right and so she was just like in agony and like i i went out to the the nurse's station i was like dude you need to she needs some painkillers right like bad and this lady like meanders her way in there and she looks at her and goes okay what's your pain at and my mom's just like fucking like doing the shaking (laughs) like like, gripping thing and her teeth are clenched she's like fucking 10 it is turn and like the lady's like okay and she like left and like never came back and like what the fuck? after like 10 minutes i like went back out there and i was like look i don't know what the fuck's going on like i i try not to be aggressive with people try to be nice and cordial but i was like look i don't know where the fuck that lady went but my mom needs some goddamn painkillers now i want to see you grab something and walk with me yeah. to the room and put it in her now and like they they went in there and they hooked her up to like dilaudid or something like that but like she was and like the lady, she walked in, she was like, why is this guy being so and he walked in, just looks at my mom's face and is like, holy shit. And, and like starts have, like giving her like the IV. Possessed. Yeah. The lady's like, what the fuck? You talk to a nurse. And I'm like, yeah, I talked to her. I think the lady was like, all right, I'll get her some painkillers. Walked out and just like clocked out and walked away to her car. <laughs> yeah. like she never came. Dude, I never saw her again. She was I gone. hate, I hate seeing when people are, are in pain like that. Like, Oh, like, Whenever I was doing the medical stuff, there was like, you know, you practice on dummies and shit for yeah. like months and then you actually have to go in and do the real thing. And uh, 
like I had to give a fucking I had to give uh, an IV to a man, and it's this frail old little man, and you can't see his veins or anything, so I had to do it in the hand, and and dude, that they, that was fucked up. I felt so bad because it's my first time doing it, you know, and you're having to stick into the hand, and like you can just feel it hitting things that you don't think it should be hitting. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, I, I can't stand that. You I know, felt awful. I went to go get my blood drawn in town and, uh, and I, it was my first time getting blood work. I'm kind of feral, you know, I never went to the doctor growing up. And, uh, and so it was like my first time getting blood work and I sat down and I was at the table in this, uh, or at the chair where they have like the, that desk thing lay over your lap and I had my arm out and, uh, I was like, yeah, it's my first time getting my blood drawn and late. And it was like this old black lady and she was like, Oh really? That's nice, honey. And she's over there like at her counter like five feet away and she fucking wheels around and just does like this walking like speed walking towards me and without stopping just goes <laughs> gunk into my arm and fills up a vial oh in like less God. than five seconds she does it for a living she's been doing it for 30 years she smelled that vein the second i walked in the hallway <laughs> yeah, dude, like she's she like knew- a dark souls boss she's <laughs> yeah, like she's crawling like- toward you like this boss music starts playing like and a I was choir like, oh. i was fucking like blown away because i was like oh. and i was like yeah, you can kind of see my vein now, but I was like fat then, so like my vein was hard to see, and she's just fucking right in that thing. Yeah, you. Like, I was you don't so know impressed. Happens. I gave her a you standing blink. ovation. <laughs> your blood's flying everywhere. You're clapping your ass off, dude. <laughs> you fucking blink, and the vial is just like water. I mean, water, blood, just spewing up before yeah. you even realize what's happened. You're already given like a pint of blood. Yeah, I was blown away, man. And then, uh, and then it turns out I had a. Uh, 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 bad no i didn't have bad cholesterol i was really high blood pressure but they couldn't figure out why that's what it was is that sorted did that go away with like a weight thing uh some of it did but i still have i think it's just genetically high blood pressure the doctor's convinced i have rage problems (laughs) do you have rage problems he's like He's like, he's like, okay, either it could be like high salt intake. And I'm like, no, no. I he keeps all- referencing it. He's like, yeah. I mean, I mean, do you get mad a lot? Uh, yeah. He's like, how well are you intake. at controlling temper? You got, uh, uh, it could be like uh, this stuff. He's like, could be a little bit genetic maybe. But I mean, this is awfully high for genetics. He's like, do you have anger problems? Do you have rage issues? And I was like, if you fucking ask me that one more time, <laughs> I'm going to twist your little head off. <laughs> No, I don't have anger issues. <laughs> and then that'd be the time that your wife, like, fucking has injured herself at yeah. work or something. She comes Fell out of the black the stairs. She comes in <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, you want to wrap this thing up? We've been going for two hours and 12 minutes. <laughs> what the fuck? Have we really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is uh, the longest one, dude. <laughs> dude, cut this shit down because I feel like... Uh, now it's like, the full thing. I might cut out that part where you kept talking about how uh, black people were inferior to white people in every way. I would appreciate that. Personally, I was just aghast. It's not a good look for you. <laughs>